Well, we had a huge response when Ron Swanson was on the live stream and perhaps some of the darkest content that we've ever covered. So Ron, on his own channel, Surviving Life, does hours and hours of live streaming and other content. And he's got endless stuff to say on these dark subjects that are central to this channel. So he's come all the way down from bloody Scotland today to build upon what we've already started. And sure. um, his channel link is in the description box below this video, as are the links to everything he's doing on his socials. So please go down and, and support him. So what got you into this line of work? Well, I started on YouTube five, six years ago, I think, just casually doing the camping, prepping, all that kind of scene. And it was awesome. And I was happy. I was happy in an ignorant world of camping, okay? I often think about those days, all right? Um, and a YouTuber that I was watching at the time started talking about the dark web. And then it became this mythology across the internet about six years ago. Red Rooms, the dark web. Reddit lost their mind. And I was just like, nah, come on. There's no way there's a part of the internet where pedophiles are hacking teenage girls' webcams and then blackmailing them into making child porn. I mean, there's there's reports with the Ninth Room case where 10 and 11-year-olds are told to insert thumbtacks by the hundreds inside oh. themselves. Like, that's where we are in 2020. So I couldn't believe this six years ago. And... There was a deep web website called Dark Scandals and a deep web website called Pink Meth. Now, the original versions of those are now gone. There is clones that have still got the archives that they, they do still push with. Now, Dark Scandals was and, and Pink Meth had archives of the girls they blackmailed, mm. all of their personal information, their mum's information, their schools, everything. And they were then put on subsequent forums to, can we uh, blackmail them to death? And things like this. Do you know what I mean? Then, and this is again, this is six years ago. And then we had websites that popped up saying, um, competition, find the girl, kill the girl, win the prize. So they would just, I mean, obviously this is, Shouldn't you've got they? to take stuff like that with a pinch of salt. Okay? Yeah. But the culture that that derives from is real. So yeah. they would put up a, a Facebook picture of someone uh, and then all these lunatics are going reverse image search and trying to find them, all the rest of it. Yeah. And, you know, there was a lot of really dark bullshit, okay, that I feel kind of is where a lot of the real stuff likes to hide behind. Because when you see stuff that's so fake, like the Human Experiment, which is another website where you could log in live to see what happens when you leave someone overnight in a pressure chamber and just keep turning up the pressure. Or what happens when someone's really hot and then you make them dramatically cold and all this kind of... And it sounds horrendous! But that's Hollywood. That is Hollywood madness. I mean, I, I'm just saying, the internet, the, the deep web's not designed for streaming video, okay? It's not like Netflix. You can go on and just start streaming stuff. It's not like that. So for people to actually get video and these red rooms, they're taken to another service, a private um, server, servers or to apps and things like this. But going back to the, the question. So I, when I discovered that Pink Meth was real and I discovered that um, Dark Scandals was real, I just started reporting on it and just, I couldn't believe what was going on. And the way I search the dark web, I don't see images and I don't see videos, right? So going after child porn websites where there's obviously a big, big image. It's just like a normal, as you would imagine a normal website, big web banner, and then buy this, buy this, buy this. There's not a community and there's not a discussion there. There's just a product being sold and there's nothing to see. So, I don't tend to go after those sides of things. I go after the forums where you've got, you don't need images or videos. You've just got thousands and thousands of pedophiles talking freely. And when you see a pedophile arguing with another pedophile that their way of being a pedophile is the best way of being a pedophile, you, that's when you grasp how mad the situation's got when they're arguing amongst themselves, you know? And we're not, and again, a really good example of how under, um, sort of underestimate the reality of this is if you were to go to the, the surface web community called rapey.cc, which is, uh, I, I, the, guy called, the guy's called Nathan something. Um, 
he's running for a political office in America, known paedophile trying to normalize um, rape and all this kind of stuff. Now, if you go to his website, there's two or 300 active members. That's it. The dark web communities, the one that I'm focusing on now is 1.6 million members. So that's 1.6 1, 1. pedophiles, child porn producers, child trafficking agencies, and consumers of this content. Now, some of the people that sell the child porn want your passport and a bill, okay? They want to see you holding up a passport and your bill, so if you fucking take them down, they're taking you down. That is how it is starting to work. Now, we've proved that when we've done our um, Bruma models, which, as of right now, is not live on the channel. It was taken down by YouTube, obviously. So it's been re-edited, and it'll be up. By the time this is out, you'll be able to go and watch it. And this goes back decades. You, the Ukraine child trafficking, uh, soft-core porn of fetish-based child images, it's rampant. And the problem that I had back then is when I seen the, the blackmail side of it, I hadn't even realized the child porn, the abuse, the trafficking that was going on. It was just this hacking side of it all. So in that rather drawn out explanation, that's how I got into it. I want drawn out explanations. Mate, well, we you're got to get them. So don't worry, that's all I've got. That's all we serve don't here. Don't cut long story short no, on this no, channel. Good, good. Wow. Oh man, that's so many questions. So say for example, someone sent a message to me and said, Sean, I just found all these pictures, blah, blah, blah. I'm sending them to you because I know you're someone. No. Stuff about it. Someone did that to me and yeah. I responded, I'm not going to click and open these pictures because yeah, I can, the police could come raid my I'm house. Sure. You don't click on any my, links, Take Sean. my computer. Do you know what I can I do? Could be, I could be done for this. Dude, do you know what I can do to a link? A link. A link. So if I was to send you a link, yeah. it's very easy to send you a YouTube link. Yeah. That looks like a YouTube link, yeah. but has a stopgap between there and YouTube. There might be a couple of little extra letters in there. People but then are sending me those? Nabs your IP. People are sending me Dude, those. Of course they are. So now when people report stuff to me, they have to report it via a screenshot. Yeah. A screenshot of the, let's say you go on Facebook, you find a guy who's abusing kids, mm. all this kind of stuff. All I need is the picture of his profile picture and his name and a photograph of the URL, basically. Yeah. Don't be clicking nothing, man. The world, we, this is 2020. Yeah. You can't be clicking stuff. Um, people are nuts. So you don't be clicking things. But anyone says to you, oh, I found this stuff. Can I send it to you? You say, I'm a YouTuber. Call the cops. That's the first thing you say to them is right. call the police now. Okay. Yeah. Don't send me any images for a start. That is, you're committing a crime. So tell them to report it to the police. Re tell them to report it to the police. Tell them to send you information on how you can find it yourself to investigate the situation. Yeah. Because if someone says to me, someone's posting a whole bunch of, you know, child torture images on Facebook, mm -hmm. I don't need to see that. I'm but, straight. But if they tell you how they found it and you follow their footsteps, yeah. wouldn't you ultimately have that on your computer? We, well, you could do if you were viewing with images on. Uh, okay, you've got that blocked. Yeah, you would just go into the dark web and yeah. go to the surface web through Tor with all the images switched off. So you can go, you can see the comments that are being made, you can data mine. Now, there's a very good chance that a lot of the images that appear on Facebook are either there by just crazy people that are just like, hey, do you know what sounds like a good idea? Let's get a whack of child porn and stick it on Facebook and see what happens. Mm -hmm. You have got a percentage of people that are just the joker, effectively. They just, chaos, want to watch the world burn. That's yeah. what they're all about. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're seeing it now on Discord servers, and we'll get onto this, right? Mm. But when when you see images, like I've, I've got a PDF I'll send to you from a group on Facebook called the, the, the Dragons, a group of super Facebook power mums, okay? Uh, and they found this whole group of people who were trading child porn, talking about trafficking kids, and the images were horrendous. And they obviously blacked it all out because mm. I've managed to do this for six years and managed to avoid any visual contact with any of this. And I'm never going to have any visual contact with it. You can't unsee this. Like, it, it's so important that people understand that when they when they hear about people like me in the deep web, I am I am not exposing myself to anything. It is so important that people understand that even if you're just reporting something, if you go on seeking out this stuff, the police aren't stupid. You know, they 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 timestamp, and if your IP pops up on a site that's designed to capture your IP, you're going to have a hard time proving that you weren't there looking at 
those images. Yeah. Um, whereas when I'm reporting on it, obviously everything's recorded, images are off, and any timestamps mm -hmm. would co inside with the, the videos. So be very careful, people. Um, but there's there's so much talk about the bad side of the dark web. There's a lot of bad stuff on there. It's not all bad. There is some good bits, but... Is the dark web exclusively those things you said at the beginning, yeah. or is it like drug trafficking there as well? Oh, man, yeah. If, if Trust me, if there's a monetizable crime, mm. you can find it on the deep web. So there, all black markets go to the deep web. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, all black markets should be on the deep web. There was a Chicago... Um, policeman who said that when they shut down pink meth the big dark web drug dealing site i think street crime went up by like 10 or 12 percent because all the dealers were back out on the streets yeah whereas if you've got a, a website where drug dealers have to fight for customer service ratings and five stars all of a sudden guns are exchanged for customer service and prompt satisfaction yeah. of customers it's a very interesting dynamic to debate mm. do you know what i mean it really is because there's no such thing as winning the war on drugs. I just want to point that out. I just want to point that out now. It's We, we need to be taxing that and just... It, that's not what we're here for. But that's No, we're for a complete reversal of drug laws, the war on drugs, it's and, madness, and to put all that, that resources for the police to go after predators. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's just crazy. Like, people have always enjoyed indulging in things like that. And it's 2020. I just believe we've tried now for, what, 50 years? And spent what is it over a trillion dollars? Billions. Yeah. We're having to make up figures. I'm pretty sure at this point. Yeah. Um. It's madness. It's madness. It is. It really, really is. And for for all the people that needlessly die because they're allergic to substances, and then the news goes fucking bananas over it. What three p kids a week die from alcohol? And the news oh, doesn't report mate, it. That doesn't include all the kids that get their fucking faces caved in by their alcoholic parents. Number one drug in all violent crime and all sex crime <laughs> is alcohol. Dude, I'm just listen. People, <laughs> all right. These these be the facts. So um, how how is this content being received then? Um, it's funny because how long have you had your channel? Uh, the channel has been around about five years. Okay. It's been relevant for about eighteen months. I so what, so you're doing other stuff on it before this? I was camping. It was all, it was it was all so, camping. It's so funny because it's like so if we go back to the like beginning of your channel, camping of, videos. Yeah, it's four years of like joy and like, hey, I'm Ron. Let's make a paracord safety <laughs> bracelet. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like it's bonkers. Because that's what it was all about, you know? And then, like I say, it went, as soon as I seen that, everything changed. And then I took about a year off from YouTube. I was just like, do you know what? The algorithm, everything, it's just too much. And yeah. I woke up one day and a guy called Chills, which is another YouTube channel, he's a narrator. I think he's, he's got millions of subscribers, millions and millions. Mm. Um, dropped one of my videos in a top 10 deep web really? video list. And I'm sitting there at Christmas last year and I'm like, why am I going up by a thousand subscribers? And I was like, oh, let's just ignore it. And then a week later, it was 2,000. And I was like, oh, something's going on here. So I found out that Chills used me in a video and I was just like, do you know what? Let's go back to the deep web, see if people respond to it. And when I went back, it was the most disgusting experience when you see what used to be a handful of communities and a handful of sites, mm. now it is just, it is overwhelming how easy it is to find this content, how easy it is to find a community. And again, please understand, I'm currently talking about the child lover pedophile, okay? This, the classic pedophile who thinks children can consent, okay? Mm. That's who we're talking about this now. We'll get on to the ones who can only get sexual gratification when children are tortured with pliers and that end of the spectrum. Because you've got it all. And it starts with the child lover. That's the, that's, when you think pedophile, that's the cookie cutter outline of a pedophile. Um, but I've had conversations with women who are trying to meet men so that the men can impregnate her, they can raise the baby, and then he can impregnate the baby when the baby's a teenager. Hold on. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. Yeah. Slow it's down. called the family format pedophile. Family format pedophile. For, yeah, family format pedophile, right? So you've got pedo mum, pedo dad, right? Who are pedophiles in their own rights. And they go on a pedophile dating community. Real thing on the deep web. They'll meet up with each other and be like, ah, oh, let's spawn a child to then share it around these families. And then when it comes a time, we can take the final step, impregnate the child we've made, make another child, and continue the system. That makes me want to think then, out of these communities, because you don't you hear a lot about men pedophiles. Yeah. What's the percent of women? 
I think women are just better at hiding things. I think in the same when you look at the stock markets, right? And you uh, here's a funny story, right? So this is going to prove my point, right? Uh, Iceland completely economically crumbled about six years ago, right? Yeah. Okay, fucked. They jailed all their bankers that did that. I want to point that out. Yeah. Fired all of the stock market people and brought in a 95% female workforce. 14 months later, whole country's fixed. Okay, <laughs> whole country's fixed. Okay, so they decided that there's a testosterone pissing up the wall thing when it comes to men and investing. And I think it's it's almost the same in the in the pedophile world where they're trying to... Uh, oh man, I forgot my train of thought again, John. Sorry. So I was asking you about the percentage of women That's pedophiles. Right. So I think women are better at hiding that. And whereas the men want to brag about it, they want to show their collections, they want offerings. Like for example... There was a big paedophile site that was shut down because people were abusing children and then leaving little signs with the owner's name. Do you know what I mean? It would be like, you know, dark pedo dragon man, 76, who's the owner of the site and all these kids in chains with his fucking name written on them. And he ended up going down and all of the people that had sent those in, obviously he was done for their crimes as if he'd requested them. And I think women are much better at understanding how important it is to not talk about this. I really do, because I don't think it's, I don't think it's more men at all. I just think that there's a lot more reported cases. I think there's a big difference as well between a 21 year old woman grooming and abusing a 15 year old boy. That boy probably doesn't realize what's just happened. He's just like, just banged a 21 year old female in a lot of cases, okay? And I think there's that's a factor. I think women, you know, keep it to themselves a lot better. But I, I wouldn't want to just pull out a number. But from what I've seen, it's definitely slightly more on the internet side is men uh, than women. So they say, though. I mean, how the hell would we know? Did you watch that true story on Netflix where there was the brothers and the oh high society God. woman pimped them out? And then one had memory loss. Oh, man. So the other one told... Do you know... Do you know what, what was it called? Do you remember? It was called... Who who am I? Tell who me who am I? Tell, tell me, me who I am. I am. Tell me who dude, I am. that came out. I was in tears about, watching dude, that. Dude, I, I, it came out about a year ago, and I was like, nah. It's like there's no way that's going to be good. I didn't know what the premise of it was, right? Yeah. So the other day, I'm just like, oh, I've not watched this. This will be a really interesting story. Wow, wow. Just could you imagine that? I'm still thinking about it and thinking, why would a mum pimp her kids out? High society woman. She's beautiful. <laughs> What's motivates? It's beautiful. It's like saying, what motivates them? Mm. The, the, the want to fuck kids. It's but as what, what simple as that. What makes us want to pimp our own kids out to other people? Because it's easier to contain. Easier what, to... what gratification does she get from that? Clout. 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 Status. Status, yeah. Because it was all like, just like famous people. Yeah, of course it is. I mean, think about how the way they were describing before he found out that he was abused. He was like, oh, there was these dinner parties and people would come to the house and they'd all have masks on and all this. And then when, she, when that boy told the story of the mum dropping off one of the brothers at that, that guy's house and then just getting picked up the next day by the mum. And that was just, no one would talk about it. It's just all normal. It's so far beyond anything you could ever comprehend as a human, right? Before you even start thinking as a parent, it is not normal to conduct yourself in this way, right? When people want to talk about sexual orientation pedophilia is not sexual orientation okay i just want to point that out now there's and there is a reason why i'm saying that the last thing we want is pedophilia to be seen as a sexual orientation and they're campaigning for that oh well haha, good luck haha. uh it's just not it just can't happen because then human rights all that shit comes into play it's not going to happen um you couldn't cure Oh, I suppose you, I guess you could cure, cure someone's sexual orientation with chemical castration because it just nullifies your sexual orientation anyway. Does it? Well, yeah. People, the success rates with paedophiles who've described what they were like before, or let's not just say paedophiles, let's say uh, rapists, anyone who's done a sexual crime. Um, some of the testimonies that have come back, it's quite mad how different a human they are now. It's like they describe it as if the, the part of your you know, personality that creates the sexual version of yourself is just completely dissolved out of you. There's no, there's nothing. It's just nulled. Um, 
which is crazy. I've spoke to trans prisoners yeah. who castrated themselves to okay. stop testosterone. Okay. And they said something similar to that. And I said that when men ejaculate, yeah, for like, a, like a period of seconds or minutes, whereby you feel how they feel, and they said, yeah, there is a, a similarity. Like you can't think about sex. It's, it's called a little deaf in um, French. Okay. What do you mean? Like after an ejaculation, yeah. if you try and think about sex right away, okay, it's not there anymore. Yes, yes. So they've got that permanently. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, usually after that happens with me, I'm trying to fight off having a heart attack or a stroke <laughs> usually at that point. <laughs> but no, I get what you're meaning. And yeah, that would kind of make sense, I guess. Um, but So if you've got that permanently then, your sexual aggression is gone, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so like, that does work. Then, well, have they, have they done studies on castrating pedophiles? Y no, not ca chemical castration. Chemical, chemical yeah. castration. Yeah. Which up until like five years ago, I literally thought it was the burning your bollocks off with a bucket of acid. <laughs> but no, it's just popping a pill. Some people would be pro that, uh, dude. I honestly, it's really, f it's really easy to sit around and be like, oh, put them all in a blender, or you know, let's shoot them all. Okay. Meanwhile. In reality, can we actually have a discussion about what to do with these people? Do, do you see and what I mean? possibly have a discussion with them, not on this channel, but one of my guests, Dr. Sarah Good, she took a paedophile onto a documentary with her. Okay. This is a paedophile who was married and has got kids, yep. and he doesn't act out on his thoughts. Okay. So basically, he put his face out there. He's a vigilant, vigilant paedophile. He put his face out there and ruined his own reputation because he felt it was so important for society to have a dialogue with paedophiles, to understand them, to give them whatever treatment it is to stop it from happening, to, yeah. to help society as a whole and to protect the children. Yeah, I'm sorry, you don't need to go on telly and do that, paedophiles. Just walk into the police station and say, I want to fuck children, and then you'll get everything you need, <laughs> all right? Um, what about the moment in that documentary then, yeah. where she dropped the kid off, and he was, he was of an age where he said no? Nah. Yeah, walked home in that. Literally, the guy came in at the room. He was like, nah, I'm out, ski. Leaves, walks to the train station, gets on a train, and then walks home. Goes into his bed. Mum comes in in the morning, doesn't say anything. Shocked to see him at the breakfast table. And I think, what did he say? He was like, that's, that's it over. Or that's not happening again. And that was it ended. And that will have been the moment in her life when she knew she couldn't contain this anymore. The Where I was talking about, you know, I think women are better at containing the situation. Also... Women are very good at manipulating men as well into situations. And there's always going to be paedophiles that are male in these situations that will protect the woman from chival for chivalrous reasons as well. As crazy as that sounds. I mean, I I'll be honest with you, you'll never see a more opening and welcoming community to new paedophiles than the paedophile communities on the deep web. It's shocking how come under my wing, young pervert, come be trained by me. And it's insane. And... The communication and the way the, the, the information sharing flows is is mad. But for him to have walked home, came home and said that to his mum is unbelievable. I don't know what I would have done if I was his brother. Like, I mean, dealing with all that trauma, right, that you've went through yourself, and then f your brother, who's your twin, who you're never going to be closer to anyone else, has an opportunity to live a life that you've always wanted through your own lies. And mm. could, could you just imagine trying to, trying to de, mm. defrag that in your brain? It's so much. It's so much. And having to listen to him call her mummy throughout the whole documentary. Oh, man. Mm. I mean, he must have got to live the life he never had through the lies that his brother was living. Yeah. You know, and gotten some peace from that because... No one, no one is telling their twin brother, oh, you can't remember anything. By the way, mummy diddles you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's just, it was an incredible documentary, incredible story. Um, wow. Yeah, I urge people to watch that on yeah. Netflix. Yeah. If you want to understand more about the female role in it, because it's, it's rare we hear about it. Yeah. Back to the female role, though, and what you just yeah. said about uh, manipulation. What about the dynamics between Maxwell and Epstein, then? What's your interpretation of oh, that? Oh, man. We're talking money now. We're talking 
big old monies, okay? So Epstein and Maxwell, <sighs> she's a raging child abuser. Yeah. 100 million percent, okay? Facilitating the rape of countless young girls. That's, to me, and this is going to sound really bad, that just seems to me like they're the ones that are chopping blocked now, you know? that Nothing stopped. It's like a terrorist cell, you know? The powers that be go, right, Epstein and Maxwell, they're running the girls right now. It's been going pretty well for a while. Epstein will have done something stupid, like left a camera on in a room that shouldn't have had a camera on, and he's captured evidence of someone raping a kid that he shouldn't have captured. Or somebody's in higher powers, pal's brother was banging a kid on the island and they got filmed and he just had to go. It's as simple as that. He'll have got too big for his boots. Clout, chasing his own clout. It's as simple as that. And money does mental things to people. Like, absolutely. Money, drugs, sex, all of that does wild things to people's egos, personas. And you've seen it with Epstein. But 100% Maxwell is a dirty, child-abusing female. Because he had, he had the majority of the money, didn't he, out of them too? Yeah. But she had the connections. Yeah, but the majority of the money... When the majority of the money is like 30 million and you're left with 14 million, like, that's... Like, what? We're talking crazy money. And that situation is going to make or break the planet. Because we have the Clintons, we have hundreds of celebrities, millions, uh, hundreds of names, visual uh, witnesses for people being on that island. Like, if people aren't starting to go, why is no one in jail? Like, where, where's, what's going on? Epstein went to jail, then they killed him, okay? They killed him. Just so we're clear. Um, <laughs> bonkers. And it was weird, because I'd done a video on Epstein, and I was like, ha, 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 I bet within the next 10 days, Epstein will be dead. <laughs> like, seven days later, he was dead. What's your premonition for Maxwell? Dead. I said, if, that, if that envelope gets opened, gone. Gone. As soon as that envelope opens, you'll just hear the, the, the rasp of death coming out of it. And it'll go after her, 100%. Because why wouldn't you? I mean, there's people that are killed every day by the cartels for way less Old farmer flipping Sanchez who wouldn't give up his land for the for the coca coca plantation gone. Maxwell knows all the secrets of the world elites and she's just mulling about in prison. Oh no! Oh no! 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 That is that we don't we can't have loose ends like that, man. That's the biggest loose end ever. You know the only way of her protecting her is if someone in the FBI who started in the FBI like a week ago hasn't been corrupted gets a big dinner serving metal fucking dome and covers her in it and sits on top of it until the trial that's it that's it it's the only way in saying that they'll just dig under it and kill her from inside the dome but they'll get her they'll get her the best thing she can do honestly if you're watching this you crazy bitch okay you just need to come clean just go crazy just start just get get a phone in prison and just get it all out there okay because the minute you do that the whole world's eyes will keep a lot keep you a lot safer do you know what I mean? We fucking hate you, right? But the minute, if if Maxwell was to just turn around and just dump everything, right? And saying that, do you know what would happen? The same thing that would happen when WikiLeaks dumped the 9-11 stuff and everyone's looking at evidence, they just go, nah, I just, that's on the internet, that can't be true, you know? I've got to wait until, got to wait until freaking it's on news at 10 before I'll believe anything. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Which is sadly the opposite. I mean, you try and explain to people that the people that own the news are the people that are raping the kids when, you know, they just don't get it. I don't understand how people are so stupid. Like, how? How do you not understand how the world works yet? Like, put down your goddamn copy of the freaking Observer and just actually do some independent research into it because it's, it's bonkers. It's bonkers. So in the last 10 years, how has the deep web evolved and where is it going? Okay, so the deep web um, has certainly evolved. I would say it's devolved, if, if anything, because it's now just everyone knows about it. It would be like, you know, your, your, your safe house. Suddenly everyone knows where, you're, you know, where your safe house is. Everyone's poking their head in the window and going, oh, look at that. So you've got a lot of people capitalizing on drugs, child porn, trafficking that are just lies. Because, hey... Last thing you're doing is phoning up the police and being, listen, I tried to buy two kids off the deep web and this guy stole my Bitcoin, 
Okay, it's not going to happen. All right, the the taxing style uh, mindset of the old drug dealer taxing days is wild with what's called honey potting. Okay, that's the new form of of taxation is honey potting. So you've got a lot of people who set up fake sites, offer them at really good prices, and they're just sitting cashing in on people who are thinking they're buying child porn, but they're just being sent like a two gig download of like dog memes. Do you know what I mean? And that's all their money gone. The deep web used to be everything that you hear that you would hear about. It was fully run by some corrupt individuals. There was massive corporation uh, style cartel um, and syndicates that were doing the child porn, that were doing the gun running and doing the the drugs, and that's just how it was. You had some people that were involved in it all because they just don't care, like the CIA. The, oh, mm, <laughs> no, we wanted you. Uh, yeah. Oh man. CIA, that's a whole other podcast. But the, the the deep web now, where we're at now, where we've come from, where we're at now, is it used to be a genuine safe haven for individuals conducting really fucked up things, like the, the pink meth. That would be really hard to do now. Do, do you know what I mean? It would be really hard to do now. It still exists massively, but it'd be a lot harder to have a brand like pink meth like it was before. Where we're at now is, if you're looking, if we're talking about genuine abuse sites, the majority of them are forum based so that they can get you there and then ship you from there straight into the app, right? Which is usually Telegram, right? Telegram, oh man, I don't think I've ever heard a word in the last 18 months more than Telegram in cases involving rape, abuse, bestiality, trading child porn, hurt core, everything. It all, boy, it all comes back to Telegram. Why? Well, the deep web used to be appealing because of the anonymity. You could do things there and never be caught for it. It was like standing in a school hall with all the lights off and the curtains drawn and you're just in your little dirty corner where no one can see you. And remember, if you think you understand the human condition by observing people who know they're being observed, you know nothing. You have to observe people when they don't think anyone is watching. That's when you see the real human. And... That was what they had on the deep web. You could exist there. You could be whoever you wanted to be. You could be nasty, horrible. And there were some real psychopaths on the dark web back then. I remember um, being on a forum five years ago where there was abortion doctors looking to sell parts of fetuses and uh, bits that had come out of the babies. I mean, literally, they were open discussion with about three or four people about how they can be delivered, all the rest of it. And this was this this was a hundred percent. It's the only time I've ever filmed a video, filmed it, shit myself, and then waited seven months before I uploaded it. What what were they doing with the parts, the people who were buying them? Who the fuck knows? Making them into probably key rings or fucking ornaments. Who knows? That's the it is you gotta remember, there's a certain level of like rich aristocrat that'll buy a dick in a jar from a science place from years ago. You know what I mean? There's that weird. I mean, we're not. I'm honest. I'm not comparing science lovers of of that to to this, but <clears throat> you can see where the macabre interest comes from. But when you've got pedophiles, you know, not all pedophiles want to have sex with living kids. You know, not all pedophiles want to have sex with kids whilst they're alive and look like kids. There's a grim, grim, grim subcategory of pedophile called the hardcore fan. And Hurtcore, I've done a whole document. This Hurtcore. is Hurtcore. This is what wrecked me at the end of last year. Going through all the, the I almost said normal pedophile stuff. That's how desensitized I am. Uh, the child lover pedophile stuff, the family pedophile stuff. After getting through all that, I was fine. I was mentally good. I was ready for the next challenge. And going into doing the Hurtcore and finding out what that means and talking to men and women who are currently walking around the planet, who are fans of this, consumers of this, I talk to them on encrypted networks because for me, when I watch a pedophile on the telly and they're in jail, it's always, oh, I'm so sorry. I've done, I've done a wrong thing. You know, I'm going to be a better man. Bullshit. Okay. Yeah, I need to observe the lion, the wolf, the predator in the wild. Do you know what I mean? Richard Attenborough goes out, observes in the wild. So this is as close to observing in the wild as I can get, is talking to active monsters in an encrypted network. Now, I spoke to them for the first documentary, I spoke to them for this Hurtcore documentary, but the Hurtcore lovers, 
they're a breed all of their own. Like when you hear somebody doing poetry, hey, Ron, I've written you some poems just to encapsulate the essence of hurt core and the beauty of seeing a child suffering. What? What, mate? Like, how far from your mindset is that? It's, how can you even fathom that? Like, it's mental. So you read all of that and then, you know, you speak to women who are hardcore fans. You speak to men who are hardcore fans. You hear them describe what they've seen in their favorite piece of content. And, the, and again, the reason that I ask that is because for me to put over just how severe this content is, I'm not watching it. That's not happening, ever. Um, but I can certainly have a horrific piece of shit um, narrate and describe something to me so that when I put it across and describe to you just how disgusting and far from child lover pedophiles, family pedophiles, what is already in your head is the worst thing in the world, okay? And then you smash through that to a new level of worst thing in the world. Your brain does tend to short circuit, I'm gonna be honest. Like I had a bit of a mental breakdown in December where I kind of just felt like I spent three weeks with my jaw hanging open as if someone had just told me something that was shocking. Do you know what I mean? And I kind of processed everything. And going back to how do I feel about putting this content out into the world, my theory when I did my first two documentaries was I'm going to sear this problem into people's brains. Like when you see a bit of footage, which is right at the start of the documentary of a man in his forties sitting down with his four year old and his six year old to discuss their sex life, right? You start witnessing parts of the pedophilic mindset, torture, whatever word you want to use that you don't even comprehend. You don't think about the, the conversations that go on between the kid and the pedo. Like, it's just unreal. And I've, you know, when you see that and you speak to someone like Lucy Witts, who I'll, I'll make sure there's a link somewhere to her documentary. Um, she was observed by a pedophile when she was two. The pedophile groomed her mother, okay? So that he had access to her as a child now. Like in that book, Lolita. Dude, she was in a sexual relationship with her stepdad for 10 years, okay? Totally thought it was normal. Totally thought it was normal. Made it so the mum had to work three jobs and he was at home all the time with her. Then her other daughter moved in when she was 10 or 11 and he started doing the same to her. And it was the new, it was the older daughter knowing that this was wrong, that the whole thing was blown, blown open. She's now a fully grown fucking woman and went back to interview him. Sat down went back to interview with him. him. Sat down literally in a desert on a fucking rug. It was beautifully shot. The documentary is just epic. Right, she sat down with him for like six hours and interviewed him. Right, because he's now up for crimes against another like ten or twelve girls and all this kind of stuff. And you know, he's sitting there saying, you know, what? and it's a big South African guy. They're South African. They've got these amazing accents. Right, he's like, you know, I still see you as my daughter. You know, and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, well, you didn't see me as your daughter back then. You know, and it was just, it's just, an, it's just another one of those wow documentaries that. You can see that she's made it an hour and 20 minutes, but it should have been like three and a half hours in three sections. Netflix, contact Lucy. You, you, that's who you want for your Netflix series. Go and get her. Um, amazing. And I've spoken to her sister as well. And I'll try and get their details for you. She's written books on documentaries yeah. and she now works with pedophiles. So she'll have a, like a pedophile anonymous group, say. That's paraphrasing. In South Africa. And she'll go and she'll try and work with people who admit they have a problem and are trying to get fixed. Now, how do we feel about that? Oh, it's, so, it's such a weird topic because anything we can do to stop kids being molested and raped, good thing, okay? And if that means that people who are willing to stand up and say, I'm sexually attracted to children, I am not acting on it, please help me, okay? I think something definitely needs to be offered to those people, okay? A hundred percent. But not like Rapey Sanchez that's like seven kids in his freaking pedophile career and proud of it and on the dark web giving it... 
that is a that those are two different kinds of people. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's how it needs to be treated. We need to treat it as an individual mindset of the pedophile. Otherwise, you're going to have people that are literally torturing children in a category with people that are having urges where that's totally like if you're having urges and want to help, go get it. I'm any chess, let's go. But if you're a fucking criminal, abuser, rape, and if you think also, all you little 17 year old map twats out there who think that child porn's not a crime, I mean, you're witnessing a crime, mate. You're you're witnessing the rape of a child, the abuse of a child. Oh, 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 it's a dog that's raping the child. Still a crime, mate. Okay? Bestiality and pedophilia and child porn have went like this over the oh, last 12 Jesus. months. I think there's something oh. where it's a lot easier to get a dog to fuck a kid and film it than it is to find oh. a guy to film it. Yeah. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, uh, it's so horrible, mate. It's so horrible that it makes me so mad, you know? So I have to, d just in case anyone's wondering why I'm so, like the way I am, I, this is just how I deal with things. And it's so much worse than anyone talks about or thinks about. You know, when you see the Surface website, like I was talking about earlier, Rapey, and the low numbers of their membership, because people are shiting themselves, they don't want to go and join that because people are talking about it on YouTube. But there's millions of other com um, communities. There's communities that, like I say, 1.6 million, which is um, what what, what uh, Rindex is on. And it's bonkers. I mean, it is bonkers, the, the conversations that go on. There's It's bonkers, the subsections of the pedophiles, again. But you're talking, once you get to, the, to a place where you have full infrastructure, where you've got modeling agency in the Ukraine, then access to people that are going to traffic the girls, photographers that are willing to take naked pictures, then you've got a distributor who's able to gather up the members for a member site and filter in the content, that is, you're done, that's you done now. You've got a closed circuit of child abuse production. And that abuse stretches from kids sitting around provocatively with their legs open wearing lingerie right the way up to, you know, like I say, kids being really badly, badly tortured and abused and everything in between. You said earlier that paedophiles like the collections. What do oh, you mean by that? Me. What's a paedophile collection? Paedophile collection. So if you're a, a non-contact paedophile, so if you're someone who just watches child porn, if you're somebody that just watches or, or takes in virtual media, doesn't go out and touch kids, your collection is your pride. Your pride and joy. And I'll tell you something else. No so paedophile. You, your videos and your pictures. That's the yeah, collection. Oh, yeah. Um, and there's cult classics. This is the thing. Like, we're... we're Pedophilia, child porn didn't start last week. We're decades and decades into this. There's, there's pedophiles that are like, oh, I got um, so and so set from 1980. You know, I only had to trade this to get it. You're not going to see a pedophile give away their content. They have it's traded. It's always traded, like for like, video for video, or whatever. That's how they talk about it. That's why it's difficult for you and me to just rock up and start a conversation with them because they're like. Get your porn out. I want to see your porn. And then I'll talk to you. Do you know what I mean? That's why when I talk to them, I go on their forums and I go, Hi, my name's Ron. I'm a YouTuber. Want to talk about how fucked you are? Contact me on Wicker. Do you know what I mean? I don't try and hide. Do they respond to that? Oh, fuck yeah. They love to brag. They love to they brag. They love to brag. It's fucked. And it's so not funny. I just want to point that it's so not funny. But man, when you see, when you, when you can compare a sexual predator and the way that he conducts himself to somebody talking about football, that passively, with that passion, we've got a big problem with with this. We really do. The 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 way that they talk and the, the pride they have, the 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 sheer self gratification they get from just being able to flex on their collections and talk about the clout that they have. And that's before we get into the people that are touching the kids. This is this is just the virtual world. Um, then, for example, you've got collections where, let's say there is a family pedophile who've got a, a, a kid that's getting distributed for abuse and you're lucky enough for the, the dad or the mum to write 
your screen name on the kid. That is like, in the pedo collection world, that is like fucking gold, okay? That is how messed up it is. That is how messed up it is. That's, it's, if you just think, if you just think that it's like CD corner basement and you know, the tripods there and the fucking light swinging like this and the kids walked in, it's not like that. It is not, I mean, I'm sure there it is, but there's, there's a lot of it that's not like that. It's really, really not. Kids, the kids have been so conditioned to think it's normal. Kids have been broken. Kids that have just vanished, like vanished. Where are the kids? Where are the kids going? Boris, Boris, there's too many missing kids, mate. Okay. And this is in a country where we have infrastructure. People say to me, oh, I didn't realize it was so bad here. Do you think it's worse like that around the world? In the Philippines, it's legal to fuck someone at 12. That's only two more fingers that I have fingers. Jesus Christ. So if you think it's bad here, you think the corruption's here, okay, <sighs> it's bad. Go to Vietnam, go to the Philippines, okay, and see how, how the corruption is there. <sighs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm the same. You, you, you get yourself really Oh, pissed. man. It gets really, gets, it's only going to get worse. I'm like, to feel really hot and sick mm. for some reason. Yeah, well, I'm breaking in lightly. Oh. So, <sighs> yeah, it's... It's it's horrible. I've dismantled my pen. Look, I mean, I didn't it's know so I, just didn't even know I it. Yeah, uh, it's Jesus horrible. Christ, and again, man. I'm not. We're, again, it's very yeah. passive for people like me and Sean to, <sighs> to to sort of seem like we're not taking this seriously at some points in this podcast. But you've got to understand, like, all of this laughter is a coping mechanism. Okay, and you've got to understand that all of this is taken really, really seriously. And when someone like Sean, who's been exposed to what he thinks is the worst of the worst, and then some idiot in a pair of shorts comes in and just fucking slaps his perception out the window. It's a lot for people to take in. It is a lot. And I'm so... I mean, this is like the, the billionth time I've regurgitated this. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just on autopilot. And I understand, because people have accused me of being um, desensitised like talking about prison gang rape and beheading yeah. stories and yeah. things like that. Of course that. you are. You fucking saw it, mate. You, you, okay. You, you've said you've told the story so many times, and and you were there hearing the stories from the prisoners and and things. Yeah. And it's it's not because you're callous. It's just because you've kind of like built up a defense mechanism, isn't it, to not go insane? Yeah. Plus, if you're in prison and someone's telling you a story about how they killed someone, the last thing you're doing is going, "Ha! Ah, excuse me, mate. I can't handle how hard that is. Can you can, just shut the fuck up, mate? I'm yeah, trying. I'm trying yeah. to have some. That's not happening. Okay. Because you're you're going to get fucking smashed. Okay. Yeah. Like, that's all I'm saying. So trust me, if you are in prison and you've been exposed to that, you're not sitting there going, "This is fucking brilliant. I'm so pleased at how my life's going right now." It's it's not like that. You're in there surviving. Um, so and that's when you're in a nice prison, okay? A cushy prison, okay? Um, yeah, so Ash has structured this, so that was just the gentle introduction questions. Oh, yeah, no, this is... Now we're going into the main the meat. talking point. The meat. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's, it's grim. All right, so surface web pedo communities using laws yeah. existing on Google. Okay, so what we have in in 2020 is a rise in pedophiles using the laws to their advantage. So what classifies child porn? Well, sexualized images of children. So we just take it right up to the line of sexualizing children. I'm going to give you one prime example. This is going to be in the new documentary. I'll cover all of this. And I'm, I'm not going to name the names of the site because I can't 100% remember it. Um, but there's a surface web community and it's a stupid name. There's a reason why I can't remember. It's like, ooh, woo, some, it's a lot of shite. But imagine a community that is based around people looking at celebrities and influencers and then creating a fantasy marriage with them. Okay. So like, I'm a big fucking Taylor Swift fan. We all know that. I mean, I'm totally down with having a wee think about what that would be like. But when all the influencers that are listed on this website, and when I say listed, I mean all their social medias, all their parent stuff, anything that links their business, which is themselves as the influencer, is on that site. But the influencers are all under the age of 12. Okay? When you've got a nine-year-old who's got 8.2 million followers on Instagram because her parents have made a business from her, and then she's now listed on a site 
admire before they expire, which is the tagline, okay? Mm. That it only exists for pedophiles to have easy access to visual stimulation, shall we say. And that's what this site consists of because it's fantasy-based influencer marriages. Mm. But the influencers are all under 12. Okay, so on this site, you have the introduction of the pineapple, all right? So the pineapple is now a new identifying side of pedophile communities. It was Biad Pizza, you had triangles and triangles, you had circles and hands and all this stuff that was released by the FBI. The pineapple now is what is happening on the deep web and on the surface web to identify communities. And this community is just riddled in it all. Uh, I'll, I'll, I, like I say, the, the documentary could possibly be out sooner than later, but when it's out, we're going to go over all of this. Now, this is Google. We're not. We're off the dark web right now. We're on Google. So you have that community that has all the social medias gathered, okay? That community is also owned by another surface web community where it's all about child modeling and admiring child's modeling. Yeah. <laughs> Not as you and I know it. Not like when you open up an Argos catalogue and you're trying to buy a paddling pool and there's a couple of kids in swimsuits, you know, having a good time. That's what we, that's our exposure to child modelling as a normal person. But when you see like a nine-year-old in like a red rubber PVC cat suit, right, with a mask on, for, who's making these for a start, right? Um That's when you start realising where the exploitation comes in and where child modelling even though it's not sexualized images of children, is still effectively softcore fetish porn. Okay? So, that site then leads to their sister site on the deep web. And that's where all the people that take the photos gather, all the people that are selling the photos gather, and behind those locked doors is where the illegal content starts to be produced and distributed. Now, this is fact, just so you know. This all stems from the R forward slash television and film debacle that happened on Google. People were typing in forward slash TV, forward slash R, forward slash, uh, forward slash something. Anyway, and they were turning up all these images of kids, right? Nothing illegal, right? But loads of images of kids. And that's where this whole freaking documentary stemmed from is that one fuck up where the, the subdomains for a 4chan from like four or five years ago, somehow now got picked up on Google because of the new site, because it's the same people that ran the forward slash R TV scandal that are now part of this try them before they expire surface web fake marriage mm. situation that then goes back to the deep web where child porn is being produced. So you have this circle where you've got the surface web. Oh, okay, maybe this, maybe oh, there's a couple of new members that seem really keen on, you know, taking their 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 thoughts further let's pull them into the second site okay well they've handled that very well let's pull them on the deep website and once they're there it's straight on to telegram and that's them once they're in the telegram community right there was a guy out in um south korea the ninth room scandal where it was the most recent massive case of a hardcore community that was discovered where you had girls having their phone hacked being blackmailed and then I think he had like 1,600 members paying up to like four or $5,000 for their membership to be part of his app group. And, you know, if you're paying that amount of money, that's when young girls in certain thumbtacks come into play. You know, there was so much abuse and torture of children and women and men uh, on this particular um, group's app, you know, um, what the hell was it, a Telegram app, that the guy has kept his mouth shut like he got busted and there was people on that list there was nfl players nba players politicians it was like an epstein list okay mm. and that guy just shut his mouth he just shut his mouth uh because he knows what happened you get epsteined you get epsteined um and that case is now if you go and look, look up the ninth room i've also done an investigation into this because it's south korea and um, when the case exploded we got a big explosion of information and then just went dead but south korea vowed to be making examples of people who are doing this big time so we'll wait and see uh, there may be a follow-up um on that story that i've just missed but it was horrific when you hear the testimonies um and some of the the, the evidence that's been allowed to be published by the press 
It's just, it's so what the dark, it's exactly what we were talking about with pink meth and the blackmail sites at the start. But we've now gone full circle from the deep web and we're now on apps. It's so much easier for a criminal to take his phone and launch it into a canal than it is to get rid of a whole server room of servers. Do you see what I mean? So that's where things become an issue. People think that smartphones and apps, they're, they're just so integrated into our lives that we don't even think about the dangers of what that actually means, okay? So nine-year-old daughter, right? You've given her a smartphone. Would you take anyone in your family who is a nine or 10-year-old, leave them in Asda or Walmart for our American brothers and sisters, and then just fuck off home? No, you wouldn't. You would never leave your kid. Would you take your kid to an adult's party? Like a normal party just full of adults. They're all getting shit-faced. Would you just take your 10-year-old and leave them there and piss off? No. So why are you giving them a smartphone? Why are you giving them access to billions of users in the world? It's not your fault, mum and dad. I get it. Mortgage has got to get paid. Bills. Life's tough, okay? And sometimes you're just like, I've been working for 10 days. There's the phone. I'm having a glass of wine. I get it. How hard is it to just give the phone with that stuff blocked? It's so easy. But knowing and figuring it out is the first step. So my advice to you parents, if you have bought a device for your child and you're like, oh, but I've set it up with my Google. No, you need to make a new G G Gmail account for your nine-year-old with their nine-year-old birthday on it. And when you sign up with their tablet or their phone to Gmail, it will say, hey, this is a nine-year-old. Can you link your mum's phone to this, please? And then everything's automated. It's that easy, okay? Now, it, you can might- they, Can the pedophiles get around that? Um, not, 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 I mean, sure. You're, you're always gonna have apps that get, you know, go around the system and all the rest of it, but you're always gonna have that anyway. What you're eliminating is 99% of your kid's ability to find them. Okay, so for example, my kids can't type in words. <laughs> like most words are banned for my kids when it comes to kids YouTube, when it comes to the app store, everything is locked down. They can't download an app or go to a website that I haven't approved without my phone going mental. You know what I mean? That's great for little kids. You know, six, seven year olds that wanna have a game or do some Minecraft or watch some videos or whatever, it's great for them. I'm not saying that, uh, very switched on 14 or 15 year old might not figure out how to get around Google. But you know, you've got like three or four years before you've got to worry about that. And there is really sophisticated monitoring systems out there if you're willing to pay five, six bucks a month. Um, but we're sort of past the stage now, parents, where you're walking around going, oh, derp, 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 I never knew. You did know, okay? So, sorry, because it's serious. It's really serious. And you've got to start treating the internet like after a room full of strangers. You would never leave your kid there, ever. You would never do that. And that doesn't mean you're a bad parent. If you do do this, it means that no one has sat down and explained the realities and the dangers of it. Because why would you think there's a danger? We're all generation one of smartphones, okay? We as adults don't have many traumatic experiences linked to a handset, you know? But sadly, there's a lot of girls who we're 13, 14, a lot of guys who grew up with a smartphone era and we're the first generation to really experience the dark side of grooming and being sucked into someone's bullshit. And we just need to understand parents, all right, mums, dads, it's not your fault, 100% not your fault. No one's coming from the council to be like, hey, just gonna teach you how to keep your kids safe, okay? I get it. I am putting out a video on all of this, so that might be done by the time this is out, and you can go and kind of learn how to secure your little kid stuff, and I'll leave you some information on how if you've got, you know, older kids, or even if maybe you've got some members of the family who've got um, some mental uh, health issues, and you want to just keep them safe as well, but it's, it's really not intrusive. And a one thing, if your teenagers turn around to you and say, hey, mum, you're invading on my privacy, okay? And that starts upsetting you that you feel like you're intruding. Just do away with the word privacy and call it rape barrier, okay? Rape barrier, all right? That's much better for parents to understand than intrusing or, you know, trying to take away the privacy of their kids. You're, you're, you're putting up a rape barrier. That's some really good advice. Well yeah. appreciated. So if the kids are in these sites then, like Snapchat and yep. Instagram, yep. And the hub for the paedophiles is the deep web. 
How do they snare them? Oh, dude, the hub, the hub for the pedophiles who are wanting to talk openly and freely about heinous stuff is the deep web. Yeah. The ones on the surface web are still talking about it, but they're talking about pineapples and pizza. Yeah. You see what I mean? It's how thick is the pedophile? The, the ones who want to talk freely are on the deep web. Mm. The ones that you really got to watch for are the ones who are lurking about on the surface web who with one ball hanging out thinking that no one's going to notice what they are, mm. you know? Mm. Because they're the ones that are like, ha ha, fools, foolish policeman, you have nothing on me. You know, that's the, that's the worrying side. And the big communities. Like, there's another community called Evil BB. And, <laughs> like, that is a genuine community of people who want to murder children. Right. There's open discussion about why you don't use duct tape when you have duck kids, because, you know, you don't want any of that trace evidence coming off on the coming off on the sticky stuff. Learn how to use cable ties. That's their best advice. Learn how many pounds of pressure they can hold. All of this. There was there. And this is no joke. Like this evil BB is a real community. They pop up, they disappear. They pop up, they disappear. Um weirdly enough when i done the hurtcore documentary they were active i spoke to a few of the members i managed to get a bunch of uh, stuff from their forum to look at and you know when you look at a really well put together four page document on how to set up a sex tourism holiday with the parents of a child in another country so that you can identify them and they can identify you without anybody actually sending photographs or evidence with each other. You've got to start thinking to yourself, like, how out of the fantasy realm are we right now? Like, how out of the, oh, I'm just venting my heinousness onto the deep web are we? Because we are talking about hundreds of gigabytes of information over the years and they 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 are a really hardcore community man like they they are they are genuinely a group of quite genuinely disturbed individuals all right so the internet let's just compare it to real estate then you've yeah. got your surface web pedos yeah. which you said are quite dangerous yeah you got your all the pedos are dangerous you got okay. your even more um the frank pedophiles who are talking about it in the deep yeah. web but the kids are on Snapchat and Instagram. How? What m techniques do they use well, to snag the kids? We're in 2020, and if we're talking surface web and we're talking f um, Snapchat, yeah. why would why would somebody that looks like you or me, right, mm. rock up to Snapchat? It wouldn't. It would be a 16 or 17 year old from the Map Movement, oh, minor distracted person. Why would we send a 40 year old mm. to groom? kids into our map community movement for pedophiles when it's easier to relate to someone that they look like 17 18 year old 19 year old so are you saying that they say set up fake profiles or they no. employ teenagers no to do i'm it? saying that the teenagers are pedophiles okay oh. the map movement it's edgy it's cool that's the mindset of these fucking teenagers on twitter what's the map movement the minor attracted person so it's the rebranding of pedophile so instead of saying you're a pedo you're now, oh, I'm part of the map movement. And the teenagers who think this is cool. Oh, man. I swear, what you need here is a screen, right, and Twitter. And we could just... 50%, mm. brace yourself, 50% of all the child abuse content reported on the internet in 2019, 50% was on Twitter. On Twitter? Yeah. So half of the child porn reported to the IWF, the Internet Watch Foundation, half just existed on Twitter. Remember that. Coca-Cola, Paramount Pictures, all you big companies that use Twitter as a platform. Just remember, you're conducting business in a virtual office space that contained 50% of all child porn reported on the internet in 2019. Just let that sit. Just let that sit. Mr. President of America, Mr banking franchise burger king you use twitter get it sorted because until these individuals until the money starts going hey can we get rid of the fucking child abuse on twitter please they're going to do nothing twitter's terms and conditions actively supports pedophiles ability to promote their lifestyle okay it's unbelievable the map movement is real so we'll go back to the map movement so minor attracted person so you have People right now, 14, 15, 16, 17, 
who are on rapey.cc, rapey.to, wherever they've relocated to, that are like, oh, I'm, I'm, and this is the fucking worst part, dude. Like, you've got some poor fucking 14 year old girl, 14 year old boy, mum and dad couldn't give a fuck, right? They're either junkies or alkies or fucking just gone. Those kids are alone, right? Alone looking for anyone to just fucking reach out and love them. It doesn't matter. They, their, their foresight isn't their, their priority. What is important to those kids right now is anyone making them feel like not an abandoned piece of shit, okay? Those are the vulnerable kids when we hear about vulnerable kids. And man, you'll get some people from the map movement just swinging in, being their savior and talking about how it's so cool to like hang around with people who are older because they understand and, you know, they treat me like an adult and all the rest of it. And that that is a lot of what you hear. But when you see kids that are treating it as an edgy, um, trending topic, OK, I mean, we we're, we're, we're doing an investigation right now into a discord where you've got a bunch of kids who thought it was really cool to talk about pedophiles and maps and edginess, man. And then a bunch of real motherfuckers who really do like child porn and are infiltrated their Discord. And there's kids crying. There's fucking uh, people posting public statements about, oh my God, and uh, you know, until I've seen the, I, I, I'm, I cannot support the map movement. It's, you've got this edgy way that kids are sucked in because they'll be sold on it as a way for them to feel accepted by their peers, okay? Peers in this case being a bunch of rapists who rape kids. Just remember that. Um, and that's the problem. The normalization of the map movement. The nor Because the word pedophile, like, how quietly would you say that in any other part of this fucking city other than this room? Like, you're not going to be going, ah, pedophiles! You're going to be like, oh, fucking pedophiles. You know what I mean? They've changed the brand. They've youth they've made it so much more accessible to young people. They've given this, this, this awakening to this movement of in the normalization and the trying to normalize the mindset and the the orientation side of it all it's scary twitter's where it's happening man if you if you want to you want proof on the map movement just go and type in hashtag baguette or hashtag map or anything map movement map baguette it's scary baguette being the term that's used for a penis right because it looks like a baguette uh, but when you start seeing boy baguette you know and oh god let's not let's not go down that road yeah so you if twitter bad report it it's there's so much abuse that goes on there and facebook's become bad as well we found so much on facebook this year and every time i do a live stream on it it stays up for 12 hours and then it vanishes no community guideline strike no email no loss of views okay so i've had four videos that have been removed by youtube and nothing has changed to my view counter right when i go on social blade you know, if you delete a video, you see minus 20,000 views for that day. Nothing. Nothing. It's as if, it's as if I'm a mental case and I've just imagined that entire live stream happening. And uh, it's wild. It's wild. So, yeah. Um, I've, done... right, I've got a few questions because my yeah. head's like struggling a okay, bit. Okay, yeah. All right. So the map movement, yeah. you're saying that there's teenagers who are joining that to be edgy. There's a percentage that are edgy. There's a percentage of them that are just young predators. Okay, so are you saying that these teenagers are just in there trying to be cool or they're actually assaulting kids who are even younger than them? Okay, so this is where it will start to get really disturbing, all right? Mm -hmm. So if you've got a 14-year-old girl who's slightly autistic mm -hmm. and she maybe has a 7-year-old brother and she's being coaxed into doing things to that 7-year-old brother because it's edgy and cool, she feels accepted. Autism leaves a lot of people really vulnerable to motherfuckers on the internet mm. and they really do especially when you have people on the spectrum who are so literal with things like my son's on the spectrum and he's very lit very literal like if you say uh, oh run over here son mm. he'll fucking run at you do you know what i mean as opposed to just coming over mm. and it's it's quite an interesting journey learning all these things with him um but you hear so many stories on these forums of oh I've got this 12 year old boy whose older sister, who's like 18, 19, she's, you know, really stupid. And we've convinced her to fucking suck off our seven year old brother and film it and all this mm. kind of stuff. Like you've got to understand that when we're talking about vulnerable kids who are just, they've just had a shit life, 
that maybe they're already being abused, whatever. That is one pocket of kids that can be sucked into the map movement. You've then got another pocket of kids that are just there to be edgy because they're bored as fuck. Okay. And then you've got actual predators. But it's the group in the middle that is the ones that get devastated and run away. The ones that are there to be edgy and think it's cool. Those are the ones that end up going to counselling because they've seen some shit. The other two brackets, sadly, the vulnerable kids, they get sucked in and they're usually the ones that end up as the, the child porn fodder. You know what I mean? They get groomed, they get sucked in. If, they, if, they're, if they're able to take a step forward, they'll just be groomed to keep taking steps forward. It's disgusting. So are you saying then that the predators in these places are using the kids to produce content, but they're not actually meeting them and you, assaulting them? You, well, you could have um, kids being groomed to film themselves. Mm -hmm. You could also have having kids being used as safe houses. So you got a bunch of cocaine you need to hide? I'm not, I've bought the cocaine. I'm not hiding the cocaine. So imagine you've got a bunch of child porn and you need to keep it somewhere. Mm. You can just dump it on one of these kids, man. Dump it on one of these kids. Have them sharing it about. Have your own little clout army of maps running around, recruiting and storing the content, recruiting more young kids. It's exactly as you imagine. It's, 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 I keep saying this on my live streams. Criminal mindset is criminal mindset. It's the same business plan if it's cocaine or if it's kids. Okay, It's the exact same business plan. You've got the guy at the top. Okay, who then filters down into the, 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 the sergeants who then got their own men on the street and everything filters back up to the top of the pyramid. It's the same. It's the same when it comes to child abuse, when it comes to these grooming gangs, when it comes to the map movement. You've always got one person at the top who's reaching out to the teenagers to then have the teenagers reach out to the younger kids and then it all filters back. And who's the one that's getting done? The, the teenagers in the middle. What you're doing here is redefining my understanding of paedophilic activity. Mate, it's, because you've I, got to look at it as a business. You've got to look at it as a business plan. That's the sixth thing. You have to look at it from a monetizable product, which is the child. And how many ways can you monetize that? You've got prostitution. You've got trafficking. You've got videos. You've got fucking live streams. You've got webcasts. All these monetizable ways that you can monetize the product, which in their eyes is children. So after speaking to Dr. Sarah Good and... Kareen Housebout, who's a profiler, yeah. they have really covered all the different types of adult, adults who assault kids. Yep. And why. And why. And the different types of, of behavior. And, and I've got a funny feeling assault. that they, they'll have had to stop themselves in their research because there must be a point where you're just like, well, we're, we're, we're 500 types of pedophile in now and it's not stopping. Do, do you see what I mean? So when we started this interview, yeah. I had the types of adults they had told me about yeah. in mind. Yeah. But now you're telling me you're just blowing that like open into like multiple. I'm not an expert. I'm a dickhead types. with a YouTube channel yeah. who figured out how to go on the deep web. Okay. Yeah. I'm only telling you what I've seen, what I've witnessed and had conversations with. And this is the realities, mm -hmm. you know, I, no one is just running around making this stuff up mm -hmm. just for a laugh and then putting up 1.2 million members worth of fake content. It's just, it's not going to happen. So I would love to sit here and say, oh, listen, there's only one type of paedophile. We've, 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 we're done. You know, great podcast, okay? <laughs> but I'm not even that smart. Like, I'm not even that smart. And it's just from what I've seen, what I've observed, talking to people, looking at how similar... And how the criminal, it's not even a criminal mindset, it's just a capitalistic mindset. Okay, there's no difference between the cocaine business plan and selling fucking Teslas. It's all just profit and that's it. And sadly, when you try and understand what pedophiles want, you've got pedophiles, like, you've got pedophiles that are doing it for their own gratification. You've got pedophiles that are doing it for the money. Okay? But does that make them pedophiles? Like a pedophile is someone that's attracted to kids, okay? If you're just a psychopath who's running around fucking a bunch of kids because they need an actor to fuck the kids in the movies, what are you then? I mean, uh, uh, do you see what I'm saying? Some people are just completely psychotic and there's no, there's no problem fucking a bunch of kids. Doesn't mean they're attracted to kids. It just means they have no problem coming in and fucking a bunch of kids. That's crazy. Okay, we don't want to think people like that exist. We want words like pedophile. We want reasons. 
okay? We need to justify the bad things in this world because the truth is we look like the monsters. You, you know, the big bad man that's coming to creep and capture our children hasn't got horns and wings. He looks like fucking us. That's the problem. So when I think of online paedophiles, because I've watched that American TV show, is it Catch a Predator? And I've also um, seen online evil. And it's like the adult male usually sets up some kind of fake profile to meet the young sure. person and then assaults that young yeah. person. So what are you saying? All you of saying, that exists. Are you saying that there's a lot more people, paedophiles online, just trying to get content and not do the assaults? Yeah, of course. Or, and and it's, it's a minority who are actually doing the fake profiles no. of trying to meet the kids and you're, sexually you're, assault you're, them. You're, you're, we're, we're, we're getting into the mad pie of paedophilia here, right? So if you look at the pie, and we've sliced off a section of the child lover, right? A percentage of them are going to be non-contact, living in their own fantasy. Could you just redefine the child lover for us again? Yeah, the child lover is someone who thinks that a child can knowingly consent to marrying you or fucking having sex with you or being your girlfriend at like... Five, okay? I can't remember the name of the, the group that were in the 70s. Pedophile Information Exchange. Possibly. Okay, yes. But they were trying to not get the age restrict the age of consent lowered to like five or six in the 70s. And then they upped it to, I think, 11 or 12 in the 80s. No! No! Okay? Um, if anything, we need to just do a Hail Mary in this country and just raise the drinking and the sex age to like, 35 for like five years okay just like five years okay and just fix the country a little bit but the, the, the there's no there's no cookie cutter for a pedophile there's no this is what a pedophile is there's not even a a profile you know it's mailmen it's you know airline pilots that's uh, firemen it's a priest it's everyone and there is not a cookie cutter people want so badly to define definitively what paedophilia is. But what it was 10 years ago isn't what it is two months ago. Because of technology. Technology. And I'm not blaming technology. Technology is fucking awesome. But on, on, we live in a balanced world of extreme good and extreme evil. And sadly, when something comes along that can be used for good, it gets used for evil as well. And that's what the internet is. That's what apps are. Listen, having a microchip in your hand and having everything is like one big currency and us all living in one government is actually a great idea. It's just the fucking crazy Nazis that would have actually be running it in our world that make it a problem. These are the people that are, you know, just accidentally poisoning 100,000 people through the water supply in Flint. You know, those are the, those are those people, you know. Who wants those people in charge of the microchips in your hand? No one! No one does. But these are all actually really good ideas. Like, But we couldn't implement them because we have no faith in the people that run the world. And if we're willing to admit how little faith we have when it comes to having a microchip put inside you, you should be questioning how much faith you have in every single thing you're told. Question everything. Never think that you can ask too many questions and never let anyone make you feel stupid for asking questions because that's a way that people defend themselves from follow-up questions is to try and make you feel like an idiot for even starting the conversation in the first place. That's when I get really excited. That's when you know you got them, you know? But there's no, there's no, I wish I could say to you, a pedophile is someone who thinks kids can consent and that's where it ends. It's not. Like you literally have guys who will fly out to Thailand once a year, rape a bunch of kids just to film it and then come home. And then they'll sell that throughout the year and then they're off to Thailand again. And these guys are usually like retired dudes living in a cul-de-sac with a double garage. In fact, literally there was a documentary about a guy who lived in a cul-de-sac without a double garage who was busted by the police. And when they busted him, he'd been going out. For, I mean, we're talking his, his material went back to the VHS days. So it was like, big computer now, and then beside it is just a decade of VHSs. And I we'll save that, we'll save that, we'll save that VHS. We don't trust world leaders because they're either paedophiles or paedophile sympathizers. Do you think you've seen a world leader? You've seen a puppet gimlet that's been put in place, so you think you're free. Come on, come on people, 2020. 
Uh, <laughs> there's no you we the, the people who run the world. It's more likely that there's six dudes in a flat above a bank in Switzerland running everything than Donald Trump and Boris Johnson. Have you? actually seen them have you seen those two muppets in the theater in the muppet show where they're shouting over the balcony hello so i'm just saying like the world is incredible at convincing us we're free convincing us that everyone that says they're there to help you is trying to save you and better you this is all lies this is all lies just as like the lies that there's i think what was it someone said eighty thousand pedophiles in the world what <laughs> so, There's 80,000 pedophiles like in one section of one forum that's got another 280,000 pedophiles on it. It's crazy. So I've got the list of subjects from Ash here. Yeah. Thanks, Ash. People watching this now, I'm already feeling woozy. Yeah. My brain's like, it's like, stop listening to this, shut down, stop listening to this, shut down. Yeah. My brain's just going but that, like that. That is called the human reaction. So when I say paedophile, that's how your brain works. It goes, oh, it's like if I put your hand over a flame, you, you pull back. It's the mental equivalent of that. That's why people don't know all the subcategories. Because who the fuck wants to follow up on, oh, that was a fun conversation about kids being raped. Teach me more. So next on Ash's list, is gonna, it's going to go up a level now, yeah. I think. Red room realities and examples. Mm. Okay, I need, so, to, I need to have some water. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I should have brought the whiskey. This is a whiskey chat. Um, okay, so red rooms for me have always been uh, one of two things. Um, nonsense, uh, marketing tools, uh, great ways for you to get hype on the internet, um, all of that jazz, because you cannot stream on the deep web. Now, I've done documentaries on this. In fact, I've got two. I've got two documentaries on this. And... Up until this year, they were completely and utterly spot on to the topic. But when you wake up one day and there's two 17-year-olds in Italy who have been arrested for witnessing a child being murdered for profit on the internet, that it's real. We're here. We're in the era where this is real. Now, the website that they were showing screenshots of through the maybe fucking two news reports of this case on the internet I actually had subscribers in Italy go and get local papers, go through all their local news, send me pictures. Oh, they were covering it in Italy. Oh, yeah, they were there. That's real. Um, but seeing seeing all of that and then seeing that it was 17-year-olds, I've seen the screenshots. I know the website. I've been on it multiple times. Multiple, multiple times. Tell you what, there's one way to know if it's real. Yeah, just sign up to it. That's the only way you're going to know. And I even put that to my viewers. I was like, look, there's two red rooms here. One of them's 120 quid. One of them's like 240 quid. Should we just open the door and see what's there? Because I knew at that point, I was like, there's just nothing. There's nothing. They're just going to take the money and there will be nothing. We are literally talking about going on the deep web, paying somebody and there to be a kid just ready to be murdered. Like it's pretty Hollywood when you talk, when you think about it, right? But there's two kids. There are two adults, 17-year-old fucking adults, who will be going to court and will go to jail because that was a red room. It was a real documented red room. And that's a bit crazy. Um, like, you've got to understand how cheap life is in most of the world. Right? We're Westerners. In fact, let's go a step above that. We are white Westerners, okay? Like... We have no concept of eight-year-old orphan child in the Mongolian fucking province of wherever who has no parents, okay? Life is cheap, okay? There's talk and there's been rumours for years of groups out in Kenya and in Africa who are quite happily to facilitate murder tourism where for a set price, you, you're literally just taken out into the jungle. There's a big hut there and they just keep bringing you people, Okay? Bring in your people. Bring in your people. And that sounds Hollywood too. But why wouldn't that exist? Why wouldn't... Do you know how much easier it would be for you to fly to the jungle, meet some mad fucking, like, r like freedom fighter from 10 years ago who's batshit crazy doing lines of coke and gunpowder to just bring you people? Like, it's so much more 
fathomable, like real, like real. That is so much more believable than a red room. But red rooms are now real, okay? So, <laughs> I, I it's so flabbergast. I mean, I, I and I, I reserve the word flabbergast. Is it red for blood? Uh, I think the red comes from the bulbs. Like it was, it was always. Um, I think it's. I don't know. I'm just bullshitting here. But for me, a lot of the the images that were fake from the first sort of sp run of red rooms uh, on the red room myths were all taken from like B movies where it was red lights and bulbs that were used in the rooms and things. And um, I think there is a certain throwback to using red bulbs if you are going to torture someone. Um, or if they're drugged for to reduce shock so that they're not seeing a big pile of red because it's cancelled out by the lights. I don't know. Um, but red rooms, existing as the myth says, okay, going on the deep web, signing up, that's where you're doing it from, is now fact, okay? But really, why would you use the deep web? I could use fucking, like, Facebook Messenger. Like, why would I not just get a WhatsApp, get 10 of my mates who want to see a girl be raped and killed, have you all pay me 500 bucks, and then I'll just put my phone there and do it through WhatsApp. That's how it's done. That is where Telegram and all these communities on encrypted, restricted apps in private groups are creating the mythology that couldn't exist on the deep web because of the lack of streaming and all the rest of it. Now it's coming to fruition with the same anonymity within these apps. And the beauty of it is, you don't even have to make your own app. You don't even have to make your own app. You want to go on the deep web, you've got to make a website. You don't even have to make your own app. Download Telegram, get everything set up, drag in your community from the deep web, get that monetization happening. We're off. So what did the Italian kids say? They, uh, the quotes that were in the in the story where you could see things, and I'm not I'm not saying this is what happened, but you, there must have been some relevance to this quote for it to exist, because where else is the quote coming from after the fact? So they said that you could pay f to witness things like a child having a limb sawn off and then hot cooking oil from the fryer poured into the wound whilst the cameras are focusing on the kid's face and all this. But let's be honest, like you're only getting halfway through someone's leg before they pass out, right? So the, you, you've got to understand the realities of the, of the bullshit and the realities of... How sophisticated a setup you would need to saw off someone's leg. Don't get me wrong. There's a big difference between sawing off someone's leg and taking their leg off at a joint and all this kind of stuff. Keeping that person alive. Peter Scully, right? Who never did red rooms, never streamed anything on the internet, but created Daisy's Destruction, which is an actual video that exists of three little girls being tortured and raped. One of them's murdered. They're all forced to dig their own graves. And... When you, when you see, right, because there's still images of this that have been heavily edited on Google, right? And Peter Scully was the puppet master. He would stand behind the camera and direct his two women that would do all this to these kids. And there was one still that I seen from uh, from Google. And it's little girl, she's, she's, got her, she's got clothing on. This woman's got clothing on. And this girl's just suspended upside down. Do you know what I mean? About this this height. Legs tied to the ceiling, arms tied to the floor, upside down. And that is how that whole torture occurred for that little girl. Suspended upside down, alone, terrified, and being used as wank fodder for some of the most degenerate pieces of shit that exist in the world. And that was 10k a pop. Did 10K. they go to prison? Oh, Scully will never see the light of day again. Scully was the picture boy for No Limits Fun. And No Limits Fun is the company or the money that funds these projects. And as we spoke about before, the pyramid, Scully was like here on the pyramid. The people above Scully, no one knows about. No Limits Fun just rebrands and goes on trading for another day. What were the women? What happened to the women? Oh, they're proper. They're all in jail. 
they're proper all in jail. The Filipino, the Philippine government even banned him from being able to publish his book because that's what he wanted to do from prison was write his book and cash in where he was going to tell all, tell all. Motherfucker. Like little girl digging her own grave under the tiles in his kitchen. And that's where she was found. Her body was found there. <sighs> so in the live stream, you said that like, People can pay different amounts of money for different yeah, to watch okay. different things. So basically, you've got people that want to watch and have no involvement. If you've ever seen Babe Station, right? Similar format. So you can watch it, but if you want to see the really good stuff, you've got to pay, right? A premium. So that's you pass the first, you know, hurdle. Um, but then you've got say 15, 15 viewers that can all can all pay 500 pounds right then you've got two people who are able at some point to make some decisions over the torture and there may be a couple of grand but then you've got the one the big daddy who makes all the decisions i think that's like two and a half bitcoins okay the only time i've ever seen the fluctuation of the the prices and the and the the amounts that are left because it will say you know 10 tickets remain and two seats remain and the last three times I've been on that site, both the top tiers have always been sold out. Like, why would you have a honeypot site faking sales that sells out? You wouldn't, right? Like, actually think about that. If all you're wanting to do is trick people out their money, you would never run out of stock, ever. It would just wouldn't happen. So does that mean, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. That could just be some little dickhead making fun of the world, just changing some numbers and going, ah, they think this is a red room, Nina. But it also could not be. It's fact. And it's so like, when you get to a point with it all where you're just like, there's no other way of knowing if any of this is real unless you open the door. None of us are going to open the door. None of us ever thought this was actually real. Now we've got kids who are getting charged for it. You've got a massive operation in a in Italy that's taken place for uh, young child and uh, young predators that are being pulled in. There's been shipping containers found. Um, that was our story about. I think Sonia touched on that. With a shipping container that was found with a dentist chair in it, and the shipping container next to it was a prison, and they were both soundproofed. Now, it was a drug cartel that were going to use it for questioning people. That's lies. Okay, I just want to. I don't like. I'll, I'll be honest with you. You don't build a makeshift prison and a torture chamber inside shipping containers if you're a drugs cartel runner to torture a couple of people, right? But interestingly enough, what if you were to take those shipping containers, right, and pop them on a boat, right, and then fill that boat up with some kids and young women and a bunch of elites and fucked off to international waters for a good two-day murder rape fest that sounds pretty plausible because i'm telling you now i have a theory that the worst of the worst of these people the worst before we get into the elites we're talking about average joe really rich average joe but we're not talking elitist money and we're not talking generations of money we're talking pedophile who has become wealthy and successful has a lot of money i genuinely believe that there is a club that prides themselves on VHS, prides themselves on SD cards that never get inserted into computers. Everything is almost like football cards when you're in primary school and you're trading offline, you're trading non-digital non, non style information. Tapes. Tapes are great. Tapes are fucking great for these people, man. You know what I mean? Trade your tapes out at sea, record it and all that stuff. They want, they want the souvenirs. And there's 100% stories about boats leaving Amsterdam with kids on them and coming back with no kids. You know, there was a, a story where a guy apparently witnessed, what is the name of this? It's the boys something. Again, if I remember, I'll show you stick it down in the description. And it was from the 90s where this guy went to the police. He said, I was shown a tape where these six men were out at sea. One of them uh, choked a little boy to death by making him, you know, sticking his member down the wee boy's throat. The boy died. And then it happened in her twice and he apparently witnessed all. But that's hearsay from a witness, okay? But the people that he was naming in all of this are legitimate 
motherfuckers. I can't remember the guys. I think it's Mark something. Um, he's a real nasty, nasty bastard, this guy. Um, and again, that's all going to be covered in an up-and-coming series that I'm doing called History Repeating, where we seem to have these 15, 10, 15 year jumps where you know, all of a sudden someone's caught in this country and they're trafficking kids and they're saying they're doing it for elitist paedophiles. And then another 10 years go by and then we're in another part of the world and another paedophile's caught trafficking kids and they are doing it for elite paedophiles. And there's just this systematic repeatingness that seems to just go on when it comes to... And I'm not... And again, when I say... When we're at this level, we're not at Epstein level. We're not at global elitist level. We're just at rich muggle level. Like rich, normal people level. Um, They've got money to burn. And they will spend... Those rich paedophiles will happily sign up. If they're into torturing kids and going out to sea, that would just be the ultimate club for them. You know? The ultimate club. Because the clout, the 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 private collection, the going out to sea once a year with the boys to kill a bunch of kids. You know, that mindset and that excitement is how it exists in their world. You know? It's not something that they're taken aback from. This is this is like their passion, you know? And that's scary. That's real scary. It's real scary. Well, Maxwell was supposedly researching maritime law and trying to create a jurisdiction outside of, you know, any other legal entity so that they could prog yeah. progress their project. Out at sea's the big one, man. Like, just think about it. I mean, think about if you had an illegal base of operations out at sea with a 360-degree view of lights and ships coming in, like... Oh, that's like the fucking criminal underworld. Like, that is everything you would want as a criminal. Imagine being able to see, right, 360 degrees for hundreds of miles and everything that's coming for you is lit up. Oh, oh come on. Come on. <laughs> so tell us about this new documentary then, In Plain Sight. Okay, In Plain Sight is it literally... Moving on from what I covered last year, uh, Hope Dies Here, the original documentary, uh, In Plain Sight is following on from that, looking exactly at what we were talking about earlier, about the app. It's basically everything we're talking about now. It's how the, the deep web has moved into an app-based um, sense of uh, content distribution and streaming. These torture rooms, like the Ninth Room, the, the way that kids are sucked into things now, like... You know, we always heard about people like Gary Glitter and, you know, weirdos in the music business that have seduced their fans, like Ian Watkins. Ho ho! Oh. Ho ho! And I've got three, three of his former victims that I'm chatting with. No way, because I spoke to the lady who turned him in and the police turned on her yeah. in the very beginning of it. They left him alone and turned on her. Well. Wow. And um, looking at that case... People, when I saw the headlines, I thought, a person cannot stoop that low. And then looking at the case, he he had a, le a level of super fans. Yeah. And those super fans were willing to give him the babies. Yep. Uh, you know, I was, you're the first person that I spoke to that has actually understood the level of madness that clout and fame, ha the allure of fame and clout is unbelievable, okay? But that was in an era, right, that's fairly shut off compared to now. Now, you you can have the same power as Ian Watkins had over his fans if you've got, like, 18K followers on Instagram. You see what I mean? Parents need to understand that if you've got a 14 or 15-year-old that wants to be an influencer or a model or work online... And some guy says they'll give them a shout out if they get their tits out in the DMs. The chances are they're going to see that as a career move because they're kids. That is where we're at. That is what is happening now on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. You've got this new wave of creator who thinks it's absolutely appropriate if a 15-year-old or a 14 or a 17-year-old DMs him saying how amazing they think they are to engage that child in inappropriate conversation. 
Let's and, let, let's stay on Watkins for a minute yeah. because I think the Americans are not familiar yeah. and they're going to be fascinated by this. Yeah, well, it's, going back to your documentary, yeah. then. So you've had interviews with what did you say? Three of his victims. I've chatted to two two of the survivors of Ian Watkins and another one who was <sighs> just about a survivor, uh, just about a victim. Sorry. Could you could you do a summary of who he is and his yeah, story? Yeah. So Ian, what I can't remember the band. I think I can't remember the band. Lost, Lost Profits. Lost Profits. Massive band. Like they were massive. Lost Profits were huge. He was the front man. Um, they were huge. They were a massive, massive band. I think he's Welsh. Yeah. Um, and like when that case blew, you're talking, no one had any idea, no one had any suspicions of this guy. And the fact that he was in court being charged with sexual assault of a four month old, right? Like, I, I can't even fabricate that. Now, he was a bad guy. And sadly, he still has victims going to visit him. He still has those kids and those parents wrapped around his fucking fingers, mate. Still going to... Still... How's that even allowed? Mate, literally one of the girls that was abused by him, one of his girlfriends, as yeah. they were called, yeah. uh, literally jumped on a train with a suit for him for when he was going to court. Jumped what? On a train with a suit for with, him? With a suit for him court. to wear in court. So the three victims that you are speaking to, what have they revealed? Um, Basically... Not a great amount, if I'm being honest with you. Two of them are really passive. Um, one of them, uh, I've confirmed a hundred percent. I'm not. I don't really like pushing them. But the one who I'm getting a lot of information from is the lady who was very nearly a victim. She still has a lot of um, evidence and a lot of things to look at. And she took a step back because he managed to groom one of her friends, and she's seen what was going on from the outside. And she she comments on a lot of it, but. When I'm, when I'm saying I'm in contact with people who are survivors, she's the only one who speaks negatively. The other two are still entrapped. Like, it's, it's a very weird dynamic when someone tells you that they're reluctant to talk about somebody they care about because they don't want their image to be ruined. Do you see what I mean? And you're going to have fangirls of people like the, these monsters. You're going to have fanboys of these monsters. This whole troops of kids that worship the Dumblane, the kids that shot up Dumblane. Eh, was it Dumblane? Is that an, no, that wasn't America. Columbine. The Columbine, Columbine. shooters. Uh, they idolise these kids. French cult mafia. Yeah, why though? We, normal brain set, it's hard to comprehend. Um, it's like people worship the Unibomber because of his environmentalism. And um, they just, I just don't get it. Um, so for me, the Ian Watkins stuff, it's been going on for months, like trying to really tie down how and what he did from people that he did it to. They're so reluctant, the ones that I've spoken to, because they're still part of his little mind game. Have you tried to speak to the woman who blew the whistle on him? Yeah. Oh, she's actually quite a good... Oh, no, I've not. Not the, whistle, the woman that she's blew the, the whistle on him. Yeah, she was the escort. Yeah. She was his girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I could try that. Um... It's one of those stories that it's been shelved and shelved and shelved and shelved, and then a little bit of information comes in, and, I, and I, it's just it's all sort of compiling. But Ian Watkins, I am telling you now, I have been so wanting to just put a good hour of information out there as to what he's done. Well, the conviction of the four month old. Then do you know do you know how that came about? Well, I think I think that was one of the charges, but it didn't come to be a charge. It was read out in court that. Um, he tried to abuse a four-month-old. Uh, I don't know if it ever was an actual charge, but it was a, an actual thing that happened, if that makes sense. Yeah. And it's grim. It's really, really grim. And it's, it's a horrible one because whenever you get into the music realm, it's a weird dynamic. Um, and when we go back to the Gary Glitter days and then we come forward into the Lost Prophets and then we come forward again into Blood on the Dance Floor, which is Davy Vanity or Davy Vanity, sorry. This is where we're at now with where and why we need to warn parents because Lost Profits and Gary Glitter were massive, okay? Blood on the Dance Floor and this new wave of groomer who's an influencer or in a musician. Is that a famous person, Blood on the Dance Floor? Uh, they were a band. A band. Okay. A lot of pish, right? Um, they groomed kids. They abused kids. They sucked in young parents with kids. Their parents unknowingly trafficked their own children to gigs to go backstage, all the rest of it. But 
this has ties to a massive YouTuber called Jeffrey Star. You know, twenty odd million. It's 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 a huge huge case where Jeffrey Star, massive makeup artist now. Okay, ten years ago, was friends with the Lost Prophets lead singer. He Jeffrey Star then publicly tweeted that he's seen this guy abusing children and coming on to children. Then a month later, his best friends and back on tour with the guy again. Okay. And is also texting Ian Watkins uh, on tweeting Ian Watkins. Oh, you know, this, that, and the next thing uh, about abuse. And again, this is all, this isn't, this isn't hearsay. This is fact. Secret Life of Jeffree Star on my channel. Go and watch it. Um, they were legitimately talking to each other. So when you have Ian, Ian Watkins and you have Davy Vanity, who are both active child abusers, one's now convicted, one's on his way to being arrested, getting tapered back to one individual. It's it's scary that the lost profits were massive, but on the dance floor were kind of massive. But that is in that is not even necessary now. You could have someone with, like I say, 10, 15,000 followers on Instagram, and the kids will the kids will thrive to be part of that in the same way. And the Davy Vanity case. That is such a horrifically tragic case because there's so many survivors. There's parents, there's children that have all been sucked into his web of lies and he's rebranded now and he's now on OnlyFans and still running free. He's never been charged with any of this. Ian Watkins, thankfully, is in jail. But when you have someone like Ian Watkins, traditionally famous, okay, and someone like Jeffrey Starr, okay, who's like multi 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 millionaire youtube superstar you know internet celebrity things don't stick as easily nowadays to when there is definitely on social media now you will get to a point where you're too big to be destroyed it's as simple as that you know if you've got a multi-million pound makeup in, uh, company and a multi-million pound YouTube channel and all of this stuff, and someone's trying to throw allegations that you backed up sex offenders five, six years ago based off of tweets. Nothing has happened. Like, no charges have been brought. Nobody's asking anything. Everyone's talking about it on YouTube and wanting views and wanting to, to clout out on all this stuff. But nothing's actually happening, and people are still coming forward telling stories about Davy Vanity. And when you realize that that level of abuse and that level of alluring fame has now been reduced down to ten or fifteen thousand Instagram followers, your kids are our kids are so vulnerable to people sucking them in to convince them that they can change their world with a shout out or a bit of clout or a collaboration. The stuff that people are willing to do, there's a lot of people out there that would kill for your half million subs. Like literally would kill for it, you know what I mean? And if you're at a young age and you've been offered, you know, a shout out or a collab, you have no idea what some kids are willing to do to get that first step. That is a whole other realm of vulnerable kids. You don't even need to be a vulnerable kid to fall into that vulnerable kid category. You could be a really head screwed on driven person and think to yourself, well, you know, it's just one stupid thing and it's going to kickstart my career. And although that sounds mad to a lot of us, that happens more often than I think a lot of us are willing to admit it does. And it, Anything else in your documentary that you've not mentioned? Um... There's a lot, but to be honest with you, we we have sort of covered a bunch of it. Um, the the legal side of how the pedophiles are using the legal side, we're deep diving into all these sites and communities. Like we're not just talking about it; we're inside these communities. You'll see all of that. Um, there's a few interviews. There's some parents who've um, had their children have been groomed, and they're talking about um, their experiences. It's mainly just this year's putting the shits up all the parents to lock down the tech. Okay, whereas last year we were looking at the pedophile, the pedophiles and who they are and how they conduct themselves and how misreported it all is. Now we're looking at the gateways into your kids' lives and how modern grooming tactics are often from a from a they're often done in a way that parents wouldn't even think exist. Like a lot of parents wouldn't think to worry be worried about some 19 year old on their 14 year old's Instagram who's got a shit ton of followers and is showing your kids a bit of fucking um, 
attention or whatever. A lot of parents will just think, oh, we're just talking to your friends on Instagram. That's the problem when you have your friends who are, you know, 12 and 14, all on a platform with multi-millionaires, pedophiles, predators, normal people, you, me, all in one big pot together. And your 12-year-old or 14-year-old is just running around and all of that. It's crazy. Next subject then. Recent deep web findings, the rise in bestiality, yeah, man. Holy child shit. abuse, crossover, yeah. content, okay. insights. So I don't know why, but this year has been the year of reading a, a police report that says man arrested for child porn that was then subsequently charged for bestiality. Mm. So I'm not exactly sure. I'm assuming we're back into the realm of it's easier to get a dog to be in the in the shot than a person. I remember when we got out of prison, there was a, like a female, I don't know if she was on YouTube, but she was famous for like, she was basically just in a relationship with her dog. This was back in 2007, yeah. 8, 9, around then. I done a video on a guy who likes to go out to the, the woods and have sex with trees. It's a lot, a lot of interesting people out there. Hey, but listen, I'd rather you went into the woods and fucked a bunch of trees. Like, if you, if it's, you know, if you've got to go one way or the other, go that way. So there's growth in bestiality in yeah, child porn. Yeah. So again, I'm totally guessing because I've never seen bestiality child porn or bestiality. I mean, I'm, I mean, maybe. I mean, I've probably seen a clip of maybe. I'm pretty sure there was a guy taking a piss in a field. And a donkey comes up behind him and jumps on top of him and he gets chased across the field. That's about as far as it goes for me. Um, but no, I think the connection comes in that if you're an aspiring child porn producer, okay, in my head, technically, it's a lot safer for you as a producer to have a toddler and a, an animal, because the animal's not going to tell anybody, do you know what I mean? In that sense, is that why it is? I don't know because I've not seen any of it. I have no idea. Um, but does that then is are, are we witnessing that? Because then it removes the person that you can physically charge because they're not on camera. It's a lot harder to charge the guy behind the camera unless you catch him with all of his recordings. If you I think see it's it. a new level of depravity that appeals. It's so easy to say that, all right? It's so easy to go, it's a new level of depravity. It's not. We're just finding out about it now. The new level we've not even found out about yet, okay? Like, the new level we don't even know about. But bestiality has been around for, for fucking decades. Like, decades yeah, there's, decades. Yeah, there's a vice... Um, story that's gone viral on youtube where they go to this village where it's a rite of passage for the men to have sex with a goat and they even the the, the vice reporters go out there and the guy even has sex with a goat but he does it kind of like behind a bush yeah. it's not showing it on camera yeah and then they ask him how, you know how it felt and that, you know after this thing but yeah it's been around it's always yeah. the goats yeah. goats have got it rough since the dawn of time, okay, goats have been sacrificed. They've been turned into Masonic aprons. They've been turned into paper, okay? Like, I'm a big shout out to the goats. You've done it. Done done a lot of things for mankind. So are there even sicker sub-genres sub than child porn bestiality that you've discovered? Uh, I wouldn't say disgusting. The most depraved thing in the world is anyone abusing a kid, right? Then someone abusing... And I, well, women are men, and then an animal. Okay. Personally, once everyone stops fucking the kids, I'll worry about the animals that are getting banged. Do you see what I mean? Like, I'm for me, I want to know why there's this crossover. Why are so many child abusers being subsequently charged for bestiality? Why is this coming to fruition? Is it a filming thing? Is it a production? Makes it easier to produce because there's not a human to be charged in the in the images? Maybe, but then if you're attracted to kids, why would you want to see a dog fucking a kid? Like, have you ever been watching porn and being, hey, wish that chick was getting banged by a German shepherd? No, because we're not in watching German shepherds. Do you see what I mean? So what does it mean? Does it mean that that is a is a is a person that is just after extreme content. I've spoken to pedophile. I've I have spoken to consumers of child porn who claim they are not pedophiles. They are just there for the extreme content. They're fucking lying, obviously, right? But to come out with a statement like that kind of makes 
the bestiality child porn crossover cases make a bit more sense maybe that was a path they were on maybe it went bdsm bit of animal porn bit of child porn and that was the progressive stage and that's why they were the charges were were upheld but there's certainly sites on the deep web now that are a hundred percent child porn child rape child torture and child bestiality that is it's mega the things that I'm seeing pop up on the deep web now are way more bestiality, way more, way more like, it looks like a normal website with like a flashing sale button and shit. Like, that's the problem. It's really becoming, the the deep web, a lot of them is starting to look like the surface web from like the late 90s and early 2000s. You know, if anyone out there knows about old HTML coding when you build a, a website in photoshop where you were slicing up the, the, the elements of an image and then as you sliced up and created your hot points you would basically have html coding that would be a website that is what a lot of the sites are like so when i upload a site i've got a big rectangle with loads of little rectangles cut out of it from the old slicing html process just for all you nerds out there um that's what a lot of it looks like so i don't know i again i don't know what the content is I've never seen the content, so I don't know if it's animals abusing kids, I don't know if it's animals abusing adults, I don't know if it's people abusing, I don't know, um, I don't know, but what I do know is there's a massive increase of it, uh, the sites are cross-promoting it, they are really pushing it, and there's big communities and there's big distributors now, again, I've not bought any of it, it could all be honeypots, but you know there's going to be a few that aren't, you know? Um, and we were deep web live and when were we deep web live Friday I think we did a deep web live on the channel because that's how cocky I am now I can just live stream I just jump on the deep web two PCs one of them's running the deep web all the images are off and I'll just do this live and show you all live okay because why not it's there it's the, it's the realities of the situation and when you see people reacting to comments that have been left like for example YouTube you go into the comments section, oh, great video, really, really good. When you see the comments that are left about child abuse, that's when people start becoming a bit more active and wanting to do something because people's minds shift when they're not having to worry about looking at abuse content and they're still able to peek around the door and see how these fuckers interact with each other. You will never see someone more motivated and kickstarted to, to fight this once you've seen a conversation between five pedophiles describing how amazing the rape of a girl was. Like, oh, you know, we can all have different religions. We can all have different lifestyles. We can all piss in different fucking ways and all want to argue and destroy each other for it. But shut up. Stop your squabbling. Who gives a fuck? Like, Unite against child abuse, trafficking, okay? Your religion, your color, your status, no one cares, okay? Once we've dealt with all of this absurd wildfire of trafficking and abuse that just, we're talking about $32 billion a year, bro, right? That's just the American profit from people trafficking, okay? Do you know how hard it is to get a kilo of cocaine from one side of a state to another, okay, compared to putting a five-year-old in the back of your car? Like, stick a five-year-old in the back of the car, drive her about, monetized, monetized. That's their mindset, okay? Pimping, okay? Pimping has never been more easy in the digital era. Look at Craigslist. Look at the backdoor madness that went on in America. Back page, sorry. Unreal. Those fuckers, unreal. They were actually legit journalists at one point as well. Um, they got shut the fuck down. They got shut the fuck down because it was it just people trafficking, people trafficking, people trafficking. 36 billion a year. 36 billion. If you're a criminal, right, and your mindset is, I don't give a fuck where my money comes from, of course you're taking up pimping. Of course you are. Of course you're getting some poor fucking women or some poor fucking traffic women, stick her in the back of your car, drive her about, done. You're done. It is so much easier to see humans as a commod, a tradable, sellable, sellable commodity that is so much easier to distribute and traffic than drugs. That's why it is now the hottest market in the world 
is trafficking people. And I don't mean like in the movies where you see a shipping container with like 60 poor bastards all rammed in. I mean, that poor fucking girl that, you know, you seen at the end of your road that looked a bit haggard because she's maybe got some problems and she's starting maybe using some drugs and before she knows it, she's paying for her drugs by being taken from point A to point B. Even if she's aware of what's happening, even if she agrees to all of this, this is still trafficking, okay? If you... I, people just don't get it. They're so, they're so caught up in what they see in movies, right? And how... It's these big operations and all the rest of it. Most of these operations, 80%, 90% of them, are just like people who run about selling ganja. They're opportunistic criminals. Why wouldn't an opportunistic criminal capitalise on monetizing a person? That's the sad truth. That is really I think they get away with it because... Um Sex workers are looked down upon by society oh, as well. Man. Nobody cares about yeah. that. Yeah, and it drives me nuts. Like, I am so for this. Like, people go on about OnlyFans, right? Do you know what OnlyFans has done? It's taken away all the dangers, okay, of anyone who wants to get into adult content creation and wants to start it independently. I used to build uh, websites for adult sites about 10, 15 years, 10, 12 years ago. Um, oh, God, no, 10, 15 years ago. Man! Time goes. Um, that's what I did out of college. It was such crazy money. Do you know what I mean? And I had a friend who worked for Television X. He was an adult entertainer. His wife was an adult entertainer. So luckily, I was in a really good part of the adult industry in the UK, making websites and things like this for non-dodgy. There was never any dodginess or anything like that. It was just as it is. But... When they got into it, they were ripped off by people. They had their content stolen. It is what it is. But in this day and age, all of those dangers are removed by OnlyFans. You know, I think a lot of people refer to online content creators who make, you know, take pictures of themselves or, or whatever as sex workers. That to me is not a sex worker. That's an independent adult content creator. A sex worker is somebody who goes out and has sex with people. Okay, like, I'm sorry, there has to be some secondary involvement. Whether you can argue with me, and I don't mind if you say that I'm wrong, I'm, I'm totally happy with that. But to me personally, um, there's independent adult content creation, there's porn stars, there's sex work. It's all, and I'm, I, listen, you do you. I'm not judging anyone. I'm 100% behind. Also, is it true that it's legal? Is it true that you can be an escort in the UK, a woman? But only if you're alone in the house. Yeah. What? That can't be real. That can't be real. So that how, cannot so how be real. How dangerous is that? No, 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 no. No one passed. Nobody. That must have cost money to pass that bill, right? <laughs> you're not telling me that in the UK, someone thought to yourself, do you know how we'll keep women safe, Sean? Right? What we'll do is we'll let them bang men for money, but only if they're alone. <laughs> Could you imagine if that was the new rules for your children being looked after? Okay. Could you imagine if it was like, hey, just so you know, there's free health, there's free childcare down the road, but you've just got to leave the kid in the room by himself. Like, what? It makes no sense. Politicians and legislators... It makes no sense. In ...introduce these laws to try and get votes or whatever, but it's they mad. just make situations worse. Same, it's it's same so with drug mad. laws. It's so Laws mad. surrounding sex work are just yeah. as bad as laws around um, Yeah, I mean, drugs. I think Australia have got it pretty, pretty well tied down. Like they've got legal sex work and legal brothels and laws and everything that protects the the women and and all that kind of stuff and you know I just I just I just listen it's a difficult conversation when you're sitting here talking about people getting naked and selling their bodies I get that doesn't mean it's going to stop all right so making people safe. Right in the same way as we're we're going to be providing needle rooms for junkies to safely jag up in this country, I'm really sorry, but the sex workers and the poor fuck, it's like, and I mean, I'm we're talking about the escorts. We're not even talking about the poor toothless crackhead standing on the corner dishing out blowjobs for a fiver. Well, fucking her, gummy fucking Sally. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, grim. It's yeah. so grim. There's um, I spoke at a school. And they said that one of their kids had gone to Liverpool and um, become an escort and then got killed by a serial killer. And it's it's like when the, there's a black market, 
you got you got pimps getting them high and controlling them. Yes. And all kinds of crazy stuff can happen to them, like like yeah. that example I just gave. Yeah. yeah it's really And sad. that that is the criminal world. hundred yeah. percent. That is organized. You know, I know a woman, right, who her ex was a murderous motherfucker. And he would quite happily only have sex with her with a loaded shotgun in her mouth. Bloody hell. I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, where do you go? Where, where, where do you go with that? I mean, she, the only reason none of you know about this and this story and who the guy is and who she is is because she's fucking terrified of when he gets released from prison. Because mm. he, she knows he's coming right back. It's crazy. So people watching this are going to want to like prevent these things and especially the content on the deep web. I mean, is there anything they can do other than, you know, following your content? Educate your kids. Educate your fucking kids. Sit them down and be like, I'm really sorry to tell you, but you see all these monsters that lurk under the beds and the demons and the boogeymans. They're not the worst thing that exists in the world. Okay. It's people are the worst thing that exists in the world. Children need children aren't stupid, especially modern kids. Okay, they can handle being told what a fucking predator is in the same way as they can be handled being told why walking across the road without looking both ways is a stupid idea. Okay, you have to stop thinking. Oh, it's such an awkward conversation to have. Fucking right, it is. Okay, but it has to happen. Okay. Because that's the world we live in. And by not doing it, you're denying the realities and the dangers of this world. And that's how I feel. You can all tell me I'm wrong, okay? But that is how I feel. I'm not talking to like a six-year-old or a seven-year-old. But when your kids are at that age where, you know, they're seeing music videos and they're emulating the dances because they know it's sexy. And they're wearing, you know, teenager -y clothes. And they're starting to, you know, become young adults can drill this in big time and that's assuming you've already had seven eight nine ten year old that you've raised with their device locked down okay we've we've secured them for seven eight nine ten eleven twelve they're hitting puberty and becoming teenagers now you need to put the next phase in place and you need to you need to really make kids understand this is the most important thing nothing could ever happen to a child online that they cannot tell you about, okay? If your child has been groomed, if your child has, you know, one time sent a naked selfie, you need to sit them down and make them understand for the second you give them a smartphone that if anything happens, if anyone says or does anything, that there is nothing that you cannot, they cannot come to you with. That is needs to be established because if that's not there the minute someone's dick appears in their dms they're going to be thinking they're going to be blamed or be in trouble for it it's so important how you as a parent handle the interactions that you have with your teenagers when it's revolving around predators online safety these conversations have to happen i know it's shit okay okay so we've got listen we all have these horrible conversations that we've got to have with our kids. Like, I had to have a conversation about periods with my daughter, okay? I'm a, I'm nailed it now, though. Like, I mean, I've got a bunch of kids now, so, I mean, I'm, I'm fluent in this. But we always have these, if you've, especially if you've only got one kid, right, and you've not had to have the sex chat yet, or, you know, you've maybe got a boy and you don't go through the period stuff or what, whatever, you're going to have times where you have to have these conversations. Grow a fucking set of balls, sit down, and just address it with your kids because... Sadly, sadly, I think one in five women are sexually assaulted or, or are exposed to some sort of sexual abuse in the UK. One in five before the age of like 20 something. Uh, well, but I mean, that ranges from like me texting you a picture of my dick right the way up to you being raped and everything in between sort of thing. Now, that's an open public world. So it's even worse online. Do you know... I'm, I've been working on a, a video with a bunch of people for a long time, all about dick pic culture. Like, if I walk into Star, if I walked, if I came into that restaurant and just whipped my dick out on the table and be like, "Hi, Sean," I'm going to jail. So why, if I text you that, is that okay? 
Why do men do that? I don't know. Well. It's not like the woman's going to go, whoa, I'm going to have sex with that. The best fucking theory on this came from a, 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 cam, a cam girl model that I know, right? And she says that it's almost like streaking where, you know, streaking, where, they, you know, when someone takes off their oh, clothes streaking. and runs. And it's the shock of everyone seeing you naked. Well, they think it's a kink where people get turned on knowing that you've just opened up a message and you're a beautiful, beautiful woman on the internet and they've now seen your dick and you're they're all like, oh my God, I'm so shocked. They think it's something like that where it's the, it's not them sending it so you'll send something back. Them sending it is what they're getting from it, is mm. knowing you've seen it, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Which kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense. It does make sense. I mean, it doesn't, that's not going to cover the, the the full spectrum of it all. Some people are just drunk and like sending their dick to people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not on, boys. Okay, so there's something coming, something coming with that as well. So it's just the truth. What was what was the question we were on just before we get off that? What was the one we were on there? Just about stopping this kind of stuff. Going <laughs> You're on I've broken, Sean. <laughs> like I've broken you. <laughs> like I genuinely feel like you know what? Going what? for a fucking happy meal. The first hour. <laughs> the first hour, man. My head was just going like, this has got to stop, stop yeah. listening, shut down brain, yeah. shut down brain. And I felt nauseous. But I, then I kind of think, when I took my jacket off, I felt the heat the heat go down. Yeah. It's horrible. I, I, I went through a pain barrier. Me. And now I'm just like, I'm listening to you, but I'm trying not to like digest the reality yeah. of yeah. it. And that's the thing. And that's, that's again, that's the same part of your brain that pulls your hand away when it's over the flame. Yeah. You know, it's self-protection. Yeah. What you're doing. Um, I'm clearly completely desensitized to all of this if I'm traumatizing fucking Sean here. So it's it's it is what it is. The it's getting worse. Don't let anyone tell you it's going away. Don't let anyone tell you that they've got a handle on it. Personally, personally, I think that if we look at pedophilia on a spectrum of someone's had a couple of weird thoughts about the little girl who lives next door but never acts on it right the way through to kidnapping kids, raping and murdering them, and everything in between, I reckon statistically is one in five people. Okay, so that's one, two, another guy out there, the guy that works down in the cafe, and the taxi driver that brought me here. Five, that's five people. So I think statistically, one of them has got, is on that. And I'm referring to it passively as a spectrum. Do not think I'm relating this to autism or have a fucking clue what I'm talking about, but I think there is a, what's a better word than spectrum? A range. I think there's a range of pedophilia, obviously, but from people that have weird thoughts, right, the way up to, to killing bastards. Watch my podcasts with Dr. Sarah Good and uh, Kareen Housebelt to find out more about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's about one in five people, genuinely. This sucks. Brema models exposed. Yes. So I touched on this earlier. So the Ukraine has a very long history with trafficking children through modeling agencies, having a really low monthly income for people. And yet these kids are walking around in dresses with thousands of sequins on them and all the rest of it. Belen Kizar was another one. Um, Belen Kizar got raided by the their country's equivalent of their FBI. Their computers were seized. And that was done from social media. So we did it. But Brima, Brima are two gimlets, a husband and a wife, who think that they're fucking some sort of mafia, right? You're not nothing, mate. You're nothing. Okay? Like, they have, and you'll see when you, it's, you just want to watch the video. I'll be honest with you. They, there's no point in me sitting here going on about it. I'll just trigger everybody. But effectively, you've got a huge, a syndicate of child pornography creators and consumers being facilitated by a Ukrainian modeling agency, Brima, B-R-I-M-A, Brima Models, just to be clear, 100% um, facilitating the creation of softcore child fetish porn, 100% doing topless and naked shoots with children inside, oh man, like I've just figured out where their set is as well. They've got this like room with uh, one of those really small but really deep swimming pools with the steps going down. So they've got that on one half and then they put up curtains and then they turn it into the most horrible looking set you've ever seen. So the surface web images are all proper photography backgrounds, kids sitting in just 
outfits that are outrageous, but they're, it looks like a photography studio, okay? These images are a mattress in the middle of the room with cur like white sheets that are pinned around the wall to make it look like there's walls, when in actual fact, what's next door is a swimming pool. And they're stupid enough to have this six foot white cuddly bear in like surface web, deep web, abuse images, normal images. This bear's nailed them to the wall. The Brimma bear, big shout out to Brimma bear. Um, these images are horrendous. And they're all out there. They're all surface web. And th the deep web stuff that was sent to me by the hackers and the, the investigators that did this, they've obviously blacked out areas. Do you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, you've got people openly discussing by name the child model saying, oh yeah, I've got Christie's topless. Oh, I've got Sophie's bottomless. Oh yeah, they'll do it, but it'll cost you. All of this I have. All of this information, facts, will be with you well, it probably is with you. I don't know when this is going to go up, so it probably it takes a month or so to oh, get sweet. it. Oh, sweet! Yeah, that'll be definitely. Yeah, you don't have to worry. It's, it'll be there. I'll be on ranting about some other asshole by then, so don't worry. It's all there. It's all there. So you are exposing these communities, which is helping bring them down. Yeah. Well, you're like a major fucking warrior in this war against pedophiles and predators, but you're getting resistance and increased trolling, and and that some of your trolls have come on my yeah, stuff and. Uh, just a big shout out to my trolls. Suck my dick, just so we're clear. Uh, yeah, a bunch of fucking idiots. Like, my trolls stem from people, I think, oh. thinking that I owe them something or trying to shape um, communities that I've been in in the past, role plays that I've been involved with. Listen, you ever heard of Dungeons and Dragons? Okay, just imagine sexy Dungeons and Dragons, okay? There's, there's people that create role plays for adults and you know it's all consenting it's all consenting it's all just part of life and a lot of people are involved in this but when you contribute to something like that and then someone decides to say oh it's a cult or oh it's this actually it was a coven we're all witches actually thank you if you want to put it literally um you know four people who are into certain you know paganism and all that coming together certainly isn't a cult people can turn any information they want and try and pass it off as fact on the internet that's not how i conduct myself i like to deal in the real world okay so i know you guys have had to put up with a lot of it and i've got to the bottom of it i there by the time this goes out there'll be a multitude of videos i've already released the first one where the individual who started um talking about me on youtube you don't want to talk about me on YouTube if you are grooming one of your 17-year-old mods out in America and I have proof of it. Like, take it somewhere else. Um, so I am basically coming to the end of this situation now. Um, again, if any of you are watching, literally, you have caused people like Sean and the survivors of the community you destroyed more problems than you've caused me. I'll be honest with you. Um... Yeah, like you have had such a little impact on my life that, I mean, what? I think I'm 14 and a half thousand subscribers stronger than I was when you started your nonsense. And here I am on the Atwood podcast. <laughs> so again, trolls, suck my neck. And these That's trolls, because you were schooling me on the way up about the term, the vernacular of the trolls. Oh. So I've had guests on, I'll give an example of Darren G., and Darren G's got a huge troll blowback. Okay. Um, people attacking him. So what they've done is they've just set up multiple fake accounts in his name. Yeah, of course. They've got on these accounts and chatted with underage yep. girls, screenshotted them. Yep. And to this day, I'm getting messages from people yep. saying, why did you have Darren G on your podcast? Look at this screenshot. Yep. It's called social engineering. This is how easy yep. people are fooled. Yep. That's why... Don't use your fucking real name on the internet and your pictures of your face. Like if you if you're on social media, get your fucking face off it now. Like get it off. I'm being serious. I'm just being serious. You don't have to have your face as your profile picture. Like you do if it's for your business, I guess. But no, people like me and like my missus and all that, and you're like your mum's dad's all that. It doesn't need to happen. Okay, it doesn't need to happen. You don't need your face there. Um, but yeah, that what you're referred to there is called social engineering. Social engineering. Yeah. So if I want to socially engineer a group of people to think one way about you because they think I'm you, 
okay? And I'm sure, you know, they're getting sent a whole bunch of child grooming or child this or whatever, and they think that it's you. They've socially engineered those that thought process, okay? So there's trolling, which in the traditional sense is not social engineering. This is the next level. Trolls have got very sophisticated over the years. Oh, it's they blowing really my have. mind. Dude. <laughs> Do you know what? So wait, I think wait until you're at 5 million. Wait until you're at 5 million subscribers and you're like, they've literally bought a fucking airplane with a banner, right, to go across the Super Bowl to fuck with me. That's where it'll go. It will. Well, it's a good job we're having this conversation with the viewers now because yeah. it's, I think it's inevitable that people are going to set up fake accounts in my name yeah. and yours yeah. and they're going to... Actually, editors, gonna, cut this out. Cut this all out. We were just talking about bacon, bacon in this <laughs> section. Okay, let's just cut all this out. But I, absolutely, that's that's why, right? I am so shit on social media. Mm. Like, if you DM me, the chances are it's never going to get replied to. Like, I'm, I'm just there's too much of it. And to be honest with you, it's all about your own integrity and understanding that if people call you out on the internet, there's rules on the internet. The internet is not the real world, okay? The internet, if you work on YouTube, okay, you're not you're not subject to the realities of the real world. You know, you look at, for example, mainstream YouTubers when they fuck up their apology videos, then those apology videos are pulled apart and assessed, and then another video comes out, and that's pulled apart and obsessed about. That's how YouTube works, okay? You can have the squeakiest clean YouTube career and then fart in the wrong place, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this following you have, it turns out a percentage of them are there to watch you fail. And they jump on it as if they're like, ah, oh, I've been a supporter for years. Have you? Have you though? Okay, you opportunistic wanker. Okay, no. Okay, no. If you've got 100,000 subscribers, call it 70,000 subscribers in your brain. Okay, they're, that 30,000 are really, they're just, they're, they're liabilities. Okay, that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate and you shouldn't appreciate your subscribers, but understand, You've got normal people working nine to five who watch people on YouTube because they enjoy the content. Then you have people that are maybe a bit younger, they they watch your content, they maybe watch some content that's more geared towards them, maybe they get all their music there and that's how they're integrated into it. Then you've got like the eight and nine year olds sitting watching Peppa Pig playlists and all this kind of stuff. There is such a massive variant to those who c consume content. But you have got this big slice that goes down the middle that feel like because you are on YouTube and they've clicked play that you owe them fucking something, okay? Apparently, because I give up my fucking life to do my job, I owe you something other than the content. Hmm, let me think. No, no. No, I'm sorry. None of us do as creators. We are here to entertain and inform and to put out the best that we can in a creative way. And that doesn't necessarily apply so much to what Sean and I do because who the fuck wants some artistic representation of fucking kiddies getting raped? No one, okay? It's straight to the point. But a lot of people are there to just fucking bring you down, okay? And it doesn't matter how big or small a mistake you make, they just want to see you burn. All right. And to those people, I I say just fucking fuck at you. I have had issues with your kind before and I shut you down. I shut you down every time. Okay? I'm yeah. talking to you, Dale. You fucking Peppa Pig, Daddy Pig looking motherfucker. You. Okay? Shut down. Three times. Three. Wait till you see the merch, Dale. It's coming. It's coming. Three times. Down. You need to come up with facts. Because the problem is, it's very easy to turn around and say, oh, Ron's this, or Sean's that. Well, let's go to court. Let's go. Let's fucking go. This shuts them down instantly. Facts, reality is not hearsay. Hearsay is not reality. Okay? And a prime example of a lot of the stuff that goes on on YouTube, especially when it comes to sensitive subjects and survivors, there seems to be this YouTube analysis that if you're a survivor you are now unable to make all your own decisions, okay? No one is allowed to persuade you or convince you or be involved with you because you're too vulnerable. The fuck? Have you actually met any survivors? Some of the survivors that I know are some of the most mentally strong, hardcore predator hunting savages I have ever met. 
They will do things I have never even thought of. Let, let me let me just jump in here because I, I wasn't gonna. Um, I swore I wasn't gonna speak speak okay. about the distasteful prank that I did recently. Oh yeah. But because of what you said, it's triggered something. Um, let me just say this yeah. first to people who might, might not be familiar. Yeah. I had a guest. She'd been through horrendous things in her life, and um, we helped her get back on her feet. Helped yeah. her get get a place. A troll. Now I've dealt with trolls, and I know not to respond to them. This is this is the thing, but this troll threatened to get a kid taken away and said that we were on drugs and trafficking women, and I just snapped. Now I'm not as sophisticated as you when no. dealing with the trolls. This is it. So I made. I thought right, I'm going to take this person down in a prank video. It was because I'm so desensitized. I really overstepped some boundaries and upset some people. Nah, I'm sorry. I'm I'm telling you, you've been told that. You've been told that's why you've done this. The only thing I can see wrong in that whole situation with two adults who are friends working together to take down a troll, the only thing I would have done different was, like I say, the 4K position of that camera, okay? If the whole thing had been done with sneaky cams, I don't think you would have had the backlash. Callie is more than capable of making a decision about something, right? I mean, she seems incredibly able to travel up the country and go and see her friend this weekend. I've subscribed to her channel now. I've been watching a lot of her updates and things like that. It's, it's great. She seems like life is good, you know? And for you, anyone, to tell her she can't make a decision for her own life when it concerns a fucking troll that is attacking her and her friends, I'm really sorry. I've got a really hard time dealing with that because survivors are not all these fragile things that have to be protected. Some of them are the most, the most strong and co like come together people I've ever met, okay? I've met survivors who just their empathy and how they live their life now has reduced me to tears and humbled me. And we're talking like ritualistic family cult, baby killing, torturing stories, okay? We're not talking, I mean, we're literally talking about the horrors you see in a movie because it's been written because it's fucking horrendous. Cults, babies, sacrifices. I know people who have brandings on them, okay? So that when they were a baby, they weren't sacrificed because they were the baby of a high-level cult member, okay? Like, that's how crazy it is. And I swear to God, the people that have lived through that, I, I, I could never be as strong as them. There is obviously a group of vulnerable, just before you knobheads in the comments, let's just get ahead of you. Um, I'm not saying every single survivor is capable of being strong or that some survivors aren't vulnerable, dickheads. Okay, just to be clear. What I am saying is human beings are individuals. And if they've went through trauma, you don't have the place to tell them what they can and can't do with their lives after they've come through it, okay? In order to become a survivor, you have to go through. You have to break through the pain and the suffering, and that's when the healing starts. And for you to turn around to any woman or man or survivor who wants to do something that empowers them over a troll, which could quite easily be the same sense of empowerment as getting something back on their abuser, you don't have the right to tell them shit, okay? You just don't. And to turn around and say that somebody has persuaded or somebody has pushed somebody into doing something is just a cop-out, okay? It's just a cop-out. Sure, that camera angle was a, was, a, was a bad move, okay? But the idea was fucking gold, okay? If, if Sean grew up on YouTube, okay, he would not have presented it this way. He would understand how the internet would react to just that one shot. That was the only part. That was the only part I had never seen because I watched your premiere of the making of it all. And I was like, what the fuck are people going on about? And then I seen that clip and I was like, okay, some, we just, all Sean needed was a point of contact. Like even it's like a 20 year old idiot that's been gaming for eight years on YouTube, just to explain to you, nah, 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 nah. It all needs to be like from behind a fern. Do you know what I mean? That's it. That's in my opinion, humble opinion. That's all that was wrong with that situation. And yes, it was shocking because it was made to be shocking. And your troll bit it and took it full, full haggard. But sadly, because of that one angle, 
it just it went a bit spicy for you. What was the term you told me um, before oh. the podcast that trolls do? The, the... Oh, clout. Clout. It's all about clout. Clout chasing is... Clout chasing. Uh, clout. Because yeah, see... means what? Clout. Well, clout. It's like if, if I've got a really cool car and your car is shit, I've got clout over you. Okay? Because <laughs> my car's banging. If yeah. my fucking girlfriend is a, some Instagram influencer with tattoos and big old cheblies... That's, I'm going to clout. That's clout. That's something I own. you got a big house. That's clout. If you show it on the internet, that's flexing. Okay? You see what I'm saying? So, 2020. Uh, a lot of trolls are just there to say, I was the guy that took down Sean. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I was the guy that contributed to the memes that made this person kill themselves. Aha! You know? It's true. And I gen I just don't care. I just don't care about the, the, the trolls that are coming after me just now. Nonsense. The trolls that uh, come after anyone because it's this mixed view on survivors. It's people want to always be the person that or, or a certain group of people always want to be the person that brings down the hero or brings down the person with a voice and all the rest of it. And you're never going to get away with it. You're honestly, what was it? What was it they were called? Cunts. That's what they're called. So that's what you're dealing with. And it's never going to go away, sadly. We work on the Webernet. So we're screwed, mate. We're, it's always going to happen. Do you know what I mean? Any other tricks the trolls play I need to be aware of? Or any other terms? Oh, oh mate. I'll, I'll send you a PDF. <laughs> um, no, you really just have to know when to react and what to react to. Uh, and that troll was worth reacting to. It's just... It, it would be like if I if I if I saw I'm going to go and fix a car engine and I've never fixed a car engine. Chances are I'm going to fuck it up, and that's all that happened. You were you you're not you've not spent the last twenty years gaming on the internet. Okay, you've just not your your experience with tech is numbers and investments and all that kind of stuff. All right, and that's not your fault. That's no one's blaming you for anything, or they shouldn't be. But someone like to have their whole fucking life questioned because of a video that two people made okay it's just nuts like i understand a lot of people were triggered by it but to assume that it means that someone's credibility is in question is not a lapse of jumps judgment in a, in a moment for a camera angle because i'm telling you now motherfuckers all of you would have been like oh this is amazing if it was all from behind a fern okay if it was all from behind a fern this honestly would be a different story because I was shocked by it, but I'm certainly, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I think any of the rumors are true, that any of the troll stuff is true, that it Sean deserves the, the amount of backlash and all the rest of it. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. If he does it every week, sure, sure. Okay. But nah, nonsense, nonsense. And doing it with somebody who he has a connection with, who, I'm pretty sure there was a like a like a suicide attempt, was there not? And yeah, like, so that I felt like bon I that like bonds people. It. Yeah. Okay. Like if you save someone's life in that moment when they want to die, okay, the impact doesn't happen. It's once they've gone through their recovery and they realize that fucking bald geezer there is the that Picard looking <laughs> motherfucker is the reason I'm alive. That creates a bond. Okay. Oh, but Ron, that means she's easy to manipulate then. Bullshit. Okay. Anyone could be easily manipulated in any situation. Okay. We've got to stop throwing around words that have such a weight behind them and are so damaging when it comes to a single mistake that was made by two individuals consenting to take down a troll that they both had feelings against. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So let's just all just kind of relax a little bit. All right? And understand that trolls are motherfuckers and it will make you do crazy stuff. And that's what happened. And trust me, trust me, right? There's nothing, nothing anyone would ever have to worry about. And if there was, you know, I'd let everybody know. Do you know what I'm saying? Thank you, Rom. We've yeah. done two and a half hours. I've only vomited in my mouth once. Good. This entire... But it's the first podcast guest who's made me slightly vomit in oh, my really? mouth. Shit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Damn. Um... New vomit in mouth merch <laughs> coming this week. No. No. Damn. I really appreciate you coming on. Is there anything well. you'd like to say in conclusion to the people watching this? Yeah. Stop fucking kids. <laughs>
<laughs> Jesus Christ. Just in case no one's asked you. Just in case you're a paedophile who's watching this now. Just in case no one's ever asked you up front to just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Walk out into traffic or walk out into a police station. Get help. Parents, listen to the words. I know I'm very animated. I look like an idiot in these shorts. But this is all coming from facts and realities. This isn't myths and legends. This isn't Reddit pages. This is eyewitness accounts of the abuse, the consumption of this content and the distribution that goes on within these communities on the dark web, seeping into our surface web, seeping into your child's mobile phone applications. Realities are always tough to swallow, just like the vomit that came up in Sean's mouth discussing this. I'm going to urge people to go down in the description box and subscribe to Ron. More subs he's got, the more he can do, obviously, in this war against predators. Yeah. And he's, he's also referenced a bunch of things like um, Lucy Wits and stuff. And yeah. So whatever links he's going to yeah. send over, we will put all those down in the yeah, description box. Yeah, go give Lucy's a lot of love. She is an incredible check this woman. Out. Huge Luke. thank you to all the new subscribers. Subscription logo, bottom right-hand corner. Huge thank you to people who've donated so we can film in professional studios with cameramen, sound engineers, etc. And in the description, those links in the description box as well are the links to my socials and uh, all the other true crime podcasts and the Epstein playlist, Royal Family, and on. hours and hours and hours of endless dark content. Yeah. If that is your thing. <laughs> And if Sean's content doesn't ruin your weekend, <laughs> just hop over to mine and I'll obliterate it for you. Like, yeah, I will say, though, if you do hop onto my channel, don't jump onto the Hurtcore documentary. Watch watch the documentaries in order. Sextortion, Hope Dies Here, um, then maybe the Red Rooms, and then towards the end, the Hurtcore is like a four-hour-long, three-part nightmare. Um, like... I'm just and that's I'm just, just being honest with you, but I'm going to be quiet now because I just rant. So just get a vomit. Well, thank bag. you so get much. Get a vomit bag me. ready. Yeah, Could, you like to hold up the tattoo. Yeah, a lot of people go on about the tattoo. They're like, oh, but you regret that. Do a fuck. Like, do you think that the Buddhists, right, have like chiseled off all the swastikas? The swastika was like hijacked by the Buddhists by the by the Nazis. It had a meaning of that was totally different from then. So people that want to talk about triangles and triangles, this is a vulnut. This represents my god Odin from the, the old gods. These are uh, my children. This is what looks like a Bluetooth logo, so I can constantly connect to the Bluetooth. <laughs> but uh, fun fact, Bluetooth was a Viking, right? And Bluetooth um, only exists because Bluetooth is a Scandinavian, um, it, it was developed in Scandinavia, mm. uh, and it was named after Bluetooth. And that, if you add one more line to there, that's the Bluetooth logo, because that's the two B and the T, pushed together in the runes. Mm. That's going to come up in a pub quiz when you win the money. <laughs> half skis. All right, half skis. Uh, but look it up. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, that's what the tattoos are. There's a lot more to come. So if these put you off, mate, you just unsubscribe now because we're getting <laughs> ravens up here and all kinds of stuff. So um, yeah, but it's all, re it's, it's religious based for me. The same with the bracelet. Uh, all of this ties into my pagan um, North faith. Um, and yeah, here we are. Fantastic, brother. Yeah. Give me a hug. Man, absolutely amazing.